Blank check with Griffin and David. Blank check with Griffin and David. Don't know what to say or to expect. All you need to know is that the name of the show is Blank Check. I podcast you. I podcast you. Hey! <laughs> I love that. Hey, everybody. My name is Griffin Newman. Uh, my name is David Sims. Welcome to Blank Check with Griffin and David. We are hashtag the two friends. This is a podcast where we go through filmographies of directors who have early success and then get a series of blank checks to make whatever kind of projects they want cinematically. And sometimes those checks clear and sometimes they bounce, baby. Good job. Thank you. Rapid time. Uh, this is a mini series that we're doing on the films of the wettest filmmaker in America, James Cameron. He's so wet. He's soaking wet. This movie is not that wet. No, but but wet moments. A couple wet moments. Waterfall. Yeah. Uh, main series is called Podnator Judgment Cast. And it's over. I mean, we have a bonus episode next week, but uh, this, is, we're, we're, this is the last film. We're at the end this for This is now. the last film, so, I mean, you know, emotions are high. His last, his last feature. This is his last feature. To date. To date. He's still with us, Jimmy C. He is very much so still with us in know. our hearts and our minds and also in his home where he lives. Well, um, he's not with us in his home. Today, we're talking his biggest film ever. Yeah. And the biggest film ever. Yeah. It's a 2009 release, nominated for, I think, seven Academy Awards. No, more than that, I think. Really? I can look it up. Well, it didn't get screenplay, maybe eight Academy Awards. Uh, highest grossing film in history. Uh, domestically, it's not been toppled worldwide. For right. Adjusted for inflation, it's the fifth highest grossing film sure. in history. Uh, it's a hit. Big, big hit. Solid triple. You know what, what's going on today. We're talking tar. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking tar. It's the Avatar. Nine so. Oscar nominations. Hey, wow, that's a lot. Talking Avatar. Talking tar. This is tar talk. Tar talk. Uh, I would do a car talk joke, but I don't actually know I know they were named one. Click and Clack, and I know one of them is dead. No. All right, Pete. I only know that because of the Disney Pixar Cars franchise, in which they appear as characters. And then I am on... Pixar message board, where they posted when one of them died. Okay. Okay. Avatar. Talking tar. We're going to talk tar. We're, I mean, you can't avoid it. Well, we're trying to. Clearly. We're not. We're going straight Avatar. into it, head first. Avatar. Influential movie. Yeah. Uh, 3D. Sure. It's it, this. So here's the thing with this movie. Mocap. This movie's in three dimensions. Uh-huh. A lot of movies in two. Yeah. Especially before this. And then after this, people were like, why don't you give me the D? And they weren't talking about Deschanel. They were talking about adding a third dimension onto their movie. <laughs> why don't you give me the DDD? They said, give me another D. Uh huh. And then went Caleb, and they went, no, not Caleb. Mm. Wow. This is a bad call. Zoe back. Bones? I don't like this callback. You don't like giving him the D? Yeah, all right. It's all right. I don't know. You did it a little too much on uh, one of the episodes. It's been a July, couple episodes. We've let it rest. Um, all right. Avatar. Three dimensions. He's and worked in three dimensions before, as you heard in our fascinating, captivating recap of his two documentaries, Ghost of the Abyss and Aliens of the Deep. We might have made a mistake by releasing this the week after Ghost of the Abyss and Aliens of the Deep. Just people just too excited? Yeah, and they need some time to recover. I mean, you got to let, people have to listen to that episode four or five times for it to really sink in. Well, yeah, and also you have to listen backwards. I hope you guys listen backwards because there's tons of clues. Right. Clues and hints about blank check mystery box that right. is, you know, we are constantly putting things into, right? Which, of course, is that Ben is dead. <laughs> oh, no. If you listen backwards. It's fine. He's a ghost, so we can talk to him. Hey, Ghost Ben. Oh, <laughs> good, good, good improv. Wait, Ghost Ben? <laughs> yeah, Ghost Ben. The Ghost Deucer? Yeah. Go Doer Ben? Uh huh. The Ghost Laureate? Yep. Mr. Ghostative? Okay. The Goes? <laughs> All right. The, the Ghost Breaker? <laughs> okay. Birthday Ghosty? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Ghost? Ghost Day Benny? <laughs> ghost Spirit Day Benny? Master? The Spirit Master? The Ghost Master? Zool? <laughs> Gozer? Goes to the Gozerian? Slimer? Yeah, that's right. It's Ben. The Taxi Cab Ghost? It's Ben. All right, enough. He's it's graduated ben. to certain titles over the course of different miniseries. Okay. This is Kylo Ben, producer Ben Kenobi, Ben Say, Ben Night Shyamalan, and Say Benny thing. And we're going to need a new one for him. Oh, uh, we got to come up with that by the end of today. By the end of today. Well, no, no, no. We need it. We need the new one for him by the start of the next miniseries. He graduates at the end of the miniseries. That's true. That is how okay. it's been yeah. in the yeah. past okay. miniseries. Okay, fair enough. And so, and I don't even think we need it on the Ben's Choice episode. 
But it'd be nice to do it there. That's true. That'd be a nice, be nice moment to anoint him. It's his choice. Yeah, you with know? holy oils. It's his. It's his big day. It it's his big day. day. I don't. I mean, we haven't even talked what we're gonna watch, but stay tuned. And I'll say this: you know, Professor Crispy maybe just got an ally. Oh no! That's why you left that. Ugh. Oh my god. Yeah. Actually I I oh yeah. there it is. He was eating Cheerios, guys. All right. You can that's, call me Dr. Crunchy. It's a nice little intro, five minutes. Let's talk about Avatar. You can call me Dr. Crunchy. Avatar. Crisp and Crunch. A sci fi original. To Fox this can fall. I real quick, can I just say Anything. Griffin, that uh intro was very crunchy. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank but not you. crispy. No. Because you are not Ghost Professor Crispy. I'm not. I'm not. No one is. I'm Dr. Crunchy. <laughs> sure. Avatar. Yeah. Okay. Talking tar. So it's, uh, you got, you got James Cameron. He's riding high. Right. He made Titanic. 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 It made. It's a very spooky episode. <laughs> Titanic. It made a few million bucks. Yeah. A couple. It was seen as a hit. It made a billion or two. And so the studio, Fox, uh-huh. the studio wrote him another blank check. Yeah. They said, you can do. Whatever you want. It's the premise of our show. Right. And he said, I'll take 12 years and then make a Sam Worthington movie. I'll take 12 years and make like a, you know, Last of the Mohicans meets Fern Gully meets like Aliens, you know, 3D, three hour epic for you guys. You into that? So I, I saw this Who's movie. Who's the star? Sam Worthington? I don't know who he is. Don't worry. We've got Zoe Saldana too. Do you think every day when they were like watching, because I guess they didn't have like conventional dailies on this movie because it was most of it's like mocap. They must have had something, though. Yeah. Do you think when Fox was watching footage, they were like, I mean, we don't get Sam Worthington, but I guess he must be onto something? <laughs> like, especially since he, like, popped Leo, you know? Yeah. You I gotta mean, think I everyone know, just I, deferred student, to him. No, but they were hot for, they were hot for Sam, right? This, Hollywood was hot for Sam. But, but Hollywood wasn't hot for Sam until Cameron hired him. No, the, I understand. The story that. is that Sam Worthington was living in his car when he got Avatar. I know, I know. And then after that, everyone was like, "I guess he must see something." Like, I think everyone hired him just off right. the strength of we're, Cameron. We're not him. gonna, we're not gonna start with Sam. We're gonna start with Avatar. We'll get okay. to Sam. I think yeah. Sam is great in this movie. Tell me about seeing the movie for the first time. Oh, Avatar. Yeah, talking to her. Well, so there's been some hype. I don't know. There's yeah. been a little bit of chatter about James Cameron making another movie. Yeah. He debuted that footage at Comic Con. Yeah. And I'd seen some of that, and I was yeah. like. You know, yeah. I think my expectations were kind of low ish, right? Weren't yours? It was one of those things. I don't know. I mean, we can talk about you. Like I said, I had a whole roller coaster, which is I love James Cameron. Oh, he's with the roller coasters. Was waiting. They call me King Daka because I'm a roller coaster baby. (laughs) They do not. They call me King Daka. Everyone calls me King Daka. Go on. Um, wanted a new James Cameron movie. Something fierce. Yeah, as did everyone. And it was always rumblings. Oh, 3D. Ooh, Alien War. Well, like I had would seen say little things about it. Coraline in 3D. Yeah. I'd maybe seen another thing. I'd like seen a couple things with this new 3D technology with sure. the real D glasses, the sort of easy little, you know, frames that we all have to wear all the time now. Coraline's the same year as Avatar. I believe it's er- earlier yeah. in that year. Yeah. And I remember, like, I wasn't like, oh, I love this and I want 3D and everything. But I was at least impressed with the 3D in Coraline. It was cool. Like, it was, you know, it gave the movie like a weird sort of, you know, tactile vibe. Like it was, it was just, it wasn't coming out at you obnoxiously. You could just be in the world a little more. Uh, cool. Coraline, I still think, is the best uh, use of 3D in a narrative feature. No, Avatar is the best use Coraline, of 100%. No, 100%. Coraline, 100%. Cool. Ride no. or die, JD Amato will back me up on this. You guys are dumb animation freaks being losers. It's Avatar. Cool it's Avatar. animation it's winners Avatar, being awesome. And then you awesome. wait 10,000 years, and then it's Coraline. And like, Coraline's great. But Coraline's no. number one with a bullet. No. It's the only one that uses the 3D thematically for the movie. That is wrong. It is Avatar, which nope. uses the 3D thematically incredibly well. You're so wrong about Coraline, that. baby. No. You can watch Coraline right now in 2D, and it's still like 98% a great movie. Not, Not sure. so with Avatar. I disagree on both counts. Okay. Uh, I was a freak for 3D. Loved it. Uh, when they started re-releasing things in 3D. Fight. You're so wrong on this. I'm really mad at you. About 3D or Coraline? About Coraline. About, You're about so Avatar. wrong about this. No, I'm not. You're so wrong about this. You're 100% no, wrong. No, I'm not. Ben, what's your take on Coraline? I don't know anything about Coraline. Hells yeah. So, um, they're both good. Oh, yeah, and you didn't see Avatar in theaters. No, I, I saw, saw Avatar it last yesterday. Night. You just watched <laughs> it for the first time at home. Yeah. 
Um, my takeaway was this is a movie that I would I liked because it's got all the things that I like about <laughs> yeah, movies. Man, this is a real Ben movie. This, this is a, a ben big movie. time right. Ben movie. Oh, this one I finish your. I love three D. Okay. When they start releasing stuff in 3D, Disney was sort of at the forefront. Of, what, hell, what else had there been? Okay, so they would be doing these very limited releases of like Chicken Little played in 3D a little bit. Chicken Little? And I went little? and saw Chicken Little because I was like new 3D. Well, there was the Rodriguez brought it back, right? Rodriguez did Spy Kids 3D and Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Right. But was Spy Kids 3D with the like the real Red D? and blue. It was the red and blue, right. right. I did not see Spy Kids 3D. 3D in, was really good 3D. in that, but, but it's with the dumb colors and everything, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I really liked the 3D in Spy Kids 3D, and I was like, I like this, the idea of everyone bringing 3D back, and then Rodriguez does Shark Boy and Lava Girl, and then Disney was starting to dip their toes, because sure. Disney's usually on the forefront of new technological advancements. So they released, like, Chicken Little in 3D a little bit. They started re-releasing Nightmare Before Christmas in 3D. I remember that. I remember that. That started 2006, yeah, was like, yeah, I believe, yeah. or 2005 was the 3D re-release of Nightmare. And like, like Meet the Robinson, like all these fucking. All right, all right, enough. But I would go see any movie that was released in 3D because I like 3D so much. Okay. And at that point in time, there was only like one movie in 3D per year. And they were almost always animated. Yeah. Yeah. And they were good. And then uh, when you know I heard about Avatar's actually happening, mm -hmm. like no false starts. He's sure. actually making another movie. Even working on this it's and 3D. the Battle Angel movie, right? Yeah. And so I would always get the two mixed up in my head as to like what exactly. And it was one of those things like. Star Trek came out a year earlier or the same, same year? year. Same right. year. Yeah. And, you know, you would see interviews with Zoe Saldana, like, and they'd be like, you're an avatar, too. And she's like, yeah, I I am. I mean, I filmed that a while ago, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, you know, it's sort of baffled as baffled as us. Well, that's the big thing. 2009 Comic-Con July was the first time they showed anything from the movie. Mm -hmm. There was nothing. It was a huge mystery box, and all you really just knew was... was James Cameron, 3D, Alien away. War. Yeah, I remember that was all you'd hear. Sure, sure. Right? And then 2009, it was like, for the first time, we're showing images. We're showing yeah, footage. No, I we're remember bringing the cast okay. out. Like, everything. All right. So and now, I remember the initial boom being like, that seems a little disappointing. Yeah, people thought it looked dorky. I have to say, yeah, I was so turned off by the 3D aspect of the film. I was like, I don't want to, that seems cheap and stupid. Well, because people think. Of, you know, the paper glasses and the red and the blue, right? Yeah. You know, they think of cheap, dorky 3D from going to the museums. But exactly. even the design of the characters and, and the level of the effects, I mean, I remember when they, because all you'd hear was just, James Cameron's work on something's going to revolutionize everything. Yeah. And people would say, I've seen a little bit of Avatar. It's groundbreaking. It's this and that. And then sure. people saw it and they were like, it just looks like some CG movie with blue aliens. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. There was some serious. I remember stuff. there was a little dip after Comic-Con. Yeah, but it was more like, I think uh, most of the people who were at Comic Con would tell you, and I know a few people who yeah. were there, like, that was amazing. But then there was backlash from the wider internet. Well, that's what I'd say. I'd say the people who were there at Comic Con. The wider internet, but who cares about the that? people? Well, because I was kind of with them. The people who were there at Comic Con said the presentation <laughs> blew them away. Uh -huh. But then as the stuff started getting online, it was like the trailers were kind of underwhelming. Yeah. It sure. felt, the I remember there fine. being a little bit of a stink of like, is he going to miss a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, there was. And the hype was more like, I got to give him benefit of the doubt that he no, can pull but he, it off. No, but he then did he the did same it again. Thing, no, no. I'm saying he did the it's same thing he did with Titanic yeah. where everyone was like, I don't know. This one costs a lot. It looks like it's going to bomb. I yeah. don't know why he's like doing this kind of a story with this kind of technology. Like, eh. Yeah. And then it comes out, opens fine, both in both cases. Strong. Yeah. And people are like, oh, well. It's going to have to multiply a yeah, lot. Yeah, if you put a usual multiplier on that, this is a huge disappointment. And then, of course, in both cases. Breaks the mold. Yeah. Uh, I went to see it opening night Same. at the IMAX 3D. Sure. Um, I saw it with a bunch of friends. I remember right before the movie ended tweeting, like, James Cameron, please don't let me down. Like, I had that sure, feeling sure, of, like, sure. just let me like this movie. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I did. And I saw it two more times in theaters. Yeah. I bought the 3 disc DVD, the Blu-ray, mm -hmm. and I have not watched it since. I saw it three times in 2009. Uh -huh. and you then hadn't watched it since? I hadn't watched it again since last night. So, so last night was the first time I watched I, it at home. First time I've watched it in 2D. Okay. All right, we'll get, we'll get to all you. All of that. We'll get yeah. to you. That's all I'm saying. All right, all right. We'll get to your DVD experience. Wait, wait blue DVD right? or blue? Blue. Yeah. blue. Blue's gotta good. go blue. It's a good blue. Yeah, it's a good blue. You know, he, he doesn't want to fuck up the blue. The three it's a good good. blue. Yeah, yeah the, the one that's in the sort it's of, you know, yeah, little it's box, and it's nice got like box. the sort of folders that you pull the disc. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like it's it. nice. I okay. like it. So you saw it opening night. Saw it opening night with my girlfriend at the time. I think and my humble brother. My brother and my brother. Yeah, double humble brag. I have a brother. Um. And I remember my brother, who is a bit of a snarky little boy, and I, I shouldn't call him a little boy. It's Joey very, C. Sims. Very patronizing. Yeah, Joey C. Sims. 
you know, my brother, especially at that time, a little, little snarky, a little like, it was kind of like, eh. Uh-huh. I was just like, yep, that was amazing. That was the best. That's exactly what I wanted. The action, especially. Like, you know, that last hour of Avatar. Yeah. It was fucking fantastic. I yeah. saw it a couple more times in theaters. I flew to London uh, in like April of the next year. So like a few months later, Avatar was on the plane. I watched it both ways. That's cool. Uh, I bought the DVD, like the crappy DVD right. when it came out. No, my brother got it for me, actually. I okay. think it's a sort of jokey present. Uh, and I've watched that maybe once or twice. And then, yeah, I got the Blu-ray, the big one. And I've watched that. I've seen it like eight or nine times. Yeah. Okay. So I love I, it. I had seen it since 09, but was a big defender of it. I mean, I don't know if it like, I was trying to think back to if it would have made my top 10 for that year. Like I liked I it a lot, but I, I, I was really into seeing it theatrically. And I was like, you know, when there was sort of an immediate backlash, the movie was always operating. It was on two it was levels. such a yeah swing toward you know it was right. like and there were like multiple backlashes at once yeah. like because there oh, was what kind were the of backlashes. Well, you just know, it's dumb. Yeah, it's dumb. People were like, "It's dumb. Why does everyone like this? It's dumb." And then everyone just it doesn't quite make my top ten for that year, but that is an extremely that was a good, year. good year. Yeah, for that's movies. what I was gonna say. That was a really good year. Fuck! Look yeah. at this. This is a great like and you got 20. Coraline. Coraline, yeah, that's above it for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, 100%. love that movie. Yeah, especially because the use of 3D. Ponyo came out that year, which is one of my favorite movies ever made. Uh, Serious Man, Inglorious Bastards came out that I year. I think Inglorious Bastards Hurt Locker, was my obviously. two. Sugar was my number one, maybe. Sugar's in my I top love 20. Sugar. Yeah. Star Trek, which I adore. Bright I Star, Star which is my number one of that year. Oh, uh, right. You one of the Bright greatest Star. movies. Yeah. Uh, House of the Dead, which is, su- I mean, sorry, House of the Devil, yeah. which is such a cool movie. Yeah. Summer Hours, the SIS. Oh, i never seen that one. Oh, you should see it. Yeah. Oh, it's in the loop. Yeah, see, you know, I never public enemies. Public enemies, I love. Fantastic. I you don't like in the, loop? in the loop? I never, oh, you're an idiot. I know. I never really got. It. And like a lot of cool littler movies, like Fish Tank, Moon. Uh, yeah, like yeah, I like a lot year. of these. Good year. Um, but uh, yeah, it just sort of immediately came out. Did well the first weekend, but not crazy well. The second weekend had no drop, and we'll then it was so the clear. Office, but, but I'm saying but it, was it was so clear hit. that it was going to be another Titanic. It was, and then it after came a out, few weeks. Yeah. It came out late enough in December that there was no like Oscar campaign. It was like the second it was released, everyone was like, "Okay, it's going to get nominated for nine Oscars." And then it got nominated like three weeks later, you mm-hmm. know, because mm-hmm. it was the end of the year. Yeah, and, and no it, one had it, seen it like it before. Briefly it came out. looked like a winner. I think. It, I, I think at the time of the nominations, everyone thought it was going to win. At least, they at least thought, like, it was one of these things where it was against the Hurt Locker, which had yeah. not made a ton of money, but was so universally acclaimed. And it was, yeah, it was like, oh, hmm, maybe this will knock it off. And the fact that they were exes, like, was such a good narrative. It was a cool narrative. Yeah. And then it swung back around to Hurt Locker as the sort of, you know, people got yeah. a little sick of all Avatar. All yeah, the time. I mean, the Hurt Locker uh, PR team did an amazing job the second after the nominations came out being like, I mean, who do you want to vote for, David or Goliath? Right, you know, yeah, and no, making no, totally. it seem like what and does also this movie he had need? an Oscar, yeah, and the, like a woman had never won Best Director. That was the biggest two- movie of all time. This movie doesn't need Oscar. I think a lot of people thought maybe Avatar win Picture, uh, yeah. Big Load win Director. Anyway, yeah. Oscars aside, but the backlash was sort of like, yeah. is this movie overhyped? And then some totally. people were coming in going like, this movie's underhyped. And it was this weird movie that was always a fight. When in the end of the day, it was just like good, solid movie. And also, I think it's a like lot a movie. of movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, wait, I had at the that. end of the day. I can't remember. Overhyped, underhyped, good solid movie. It's uh, okay. Professor Crunchy. <laughs> um, Dr. Crunchy. Avatar. Sorry, don't call me Professor Crunchy. Uh, and now, of course, he's working on these sequels. Right. Which, once again, much like the creation of Avatar, you're like, well, that seems like the wrong decision. That seems totally stupid. Yeah. Don't do that. Uh, I guess, you know, maybe it'll work out again. Like, I mean, that's how, what else can you say? Really? As you always say, I mean, uh, if James Cameron. Say, Tells me I want five Avatar movies, then I want five Avatar movies. Your favorite quote of mine. Let, let's go through the story of the film and then get to at the end, like, sort of sequel talk. Because yeah. I have a lot of thoughts on about what the sequels could be or, and how I feel about them. Okay, so this movie starts out. You watched the theatrical version, right? I did. I've seen the extended versions. I think they're both very bad. I think all the additions, save maybe one scene, are really bad. And I think he made the right call with the theatrical cut. I didn't watch the theatrical. I watched the extended. I know you did. Yeah. Uh, you're saying you thought he made the right call, Jimmy. Yeah. I thought you said I made the right call. I made like the, wrong the theatrical call. cut yeah. is the correct cut of the film. I th- I think Henri all of- the mentions of the school are added uh, weight to the film. I think the rest of the stuff doesn't really matter, but I also think... No, I think the rest of the stuff's harmful. That's the problem. It's yeah, not good. I also, because I hadn't seen it in like seven years, right. I was having a hard time remembering what was or wasn't I in the theatrical. I'm sure you can. And that's why I'm setting this up. 
Um, because I think it is important to cover the stuff he adds, even if not in depth. Um, the, not certainly not in depth. The, the theatrical version opens with him opening his eyes and being like pulled out of like a chamber, mm-hmm. weightless in a space thing, and through yeah. a lot of clunky, like very fast expositional right. voiceover, just being like, "It is clunky. It's very clunky, but it's fast." The first fifteen minutes of he this gets movie you in are the avi- yeah, but he gets horrific. you into the Avatar pretty quickly for a movie that has to explain a lot. That's what I was gonna say because even in the the extended version, which has a full five minutes right. on Earth, like present, you know, set in real time scenes before it even gets to the opening of what the theatrical version opens with. Uh huh. That version still gets him in the Avatar within fifteen minutes. Right, right, right. Which means the theatrical the, gets the, him yeah, in within 10. ten. I think you're right because it's just like he wakes up on the space station. You have those brief flashbacks to his twin brother being dead. And uh, and then and he's like, uh, here's Prometheus. I mean, not Prometheus. Jesus, Pandora. You know. Right. And there's like the five minutes of like, and he meets Sigourney uh, Weaver, Sigourney. negging him. Yeah, yeah she, she negs him. It's uh, Sigourney negs. She comes out of the pod, being like, "Where's my goddamn cigarette?" This is cool. She's great. Great. Oh, great. I love that. Part. Great in this movie. I yeah. love lab smoking. She's she's, <laughs> she's real hammy and and just what the movie needs. I think yeah, Every, everyone who's pitched. hemming it up is is doing a good job. Yeah, I think this is a weird instance where I think the performances that don't work in this movie are people who are underacting. Uh, yeah, trying to be more natural. Yeah. And uh, I, I, although actually I don't think any performance does. I think all the performances are solid in this movie. Worthington? Yeah, totally. I'm going to disagree with you hard on this as we get further no, into I think it. He's, he's, he's great in this movie. And it's one of those things where he, you know, has not delivered on any promise that he showed in this. Or in Terminary Salvation, which he's also okay in. I think this is the same performance he gives in every movie. Yeah. I think the performance plays better because the movie around him is better. Sure. I think this movie would be a Stone Cold masterpiece with a better performance in the center. It's hard. That's a hard thing to say because I'd have to see it. I think he's very winning. He's very understated. And he lets, like, the better things you know, do their shit. I think he's too understated. I think it, it's... Uh, uh, I think he's great in the mocap. I ju- as- oh, see, that's where I disagree 100%. Oh, well, we just disagree. That's where I disagree because I think the mocap is... The technology wasn't at a point... He's so small and he's so subtle that so often it feels like he's just kind of on neutral because he has to push through the mocap. We, dis- we disagree. Whereas... Saldana is giving a much more expressive theatrical she's performance, terrific. which translates through the animation. Right, but she's supposed to be like that. She's supposed to be a, like a natural member of the world, whereas he's supposed to be defensive and on guard, and but it I works. I compare it to to Weaver in the mocap or any of that. Stuff. I I think he's- Weaver's. Weaver's performance in the mocap is so weird because the avatar looks so much like her that you're a little freaked out. Which is the only one they do that it's with. Con- yeah, it's they so break, uncanny valley. Like, they break the rules of the Navi design for Weaver because yeah. everyone else has the really flat nose bridge. They do. And although, with her, they do the little Sigourney Weaver nose because they clearly wanted the audiences to feel comfortable with what's her. What's the tall, skinny guy called? Norm uh, Spellman. No, the actor. Joel David Moore. Yeah, he, his looks kind of like him. His looks like him. I mean, but they it's more, yes. I, okay. But it still abides by the rules of okay, the Navi design. Okay, we're moving on. But yes, you're right. Sigaruni is just a blue Sigaruni. They don't translate her facial features. They just paint her blue. Yeah. So they have more... a shirt on her. Yeah. She's got the Stanford shirt. Yeah, she's got the Stanford <laughs> shirt. Uh, yeah, it would have been fun to see uh, them make like a Stephen Lang avatar, right? Yeah. Uh, Maybe know. for the second one. Uh, Avatu. Uh, Tuvatar. Uh, Dilip Rao or Michelle Rodriguez, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, good, yeah. good little ensemble. I, I like the whole I cast. hope all the characters who die in this movie come back as Navi in the next I'd movie. really like... Um, Michelle Rodriguez to come back. Me too. Because I feel like the movie doesn't do her dirty. She's great, but I mean, you know, it's a small part. They don't do her dirty, but they also don't really let her do anything until like the last forty minutes. Of the but film. I mean, she, she and she earns, she owns it. She's great when yeah. she those but, few little things. But the movie's banking a lot on you being like, oh, Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah. I know her. Which, I know the type of character she plays. Which is we're a gonna hit call. the ground running. Right. They don't really characterize her at all within the action of the movie. No. You just have to like know the type of. Well, also, you just need a human or two to not be the worst. And so it's nice to have her. I I just think this movie doesn't do as good of a job sort of fleshing out the other humans as Cameron usually does. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you if you're thinking aliens, but I don't know if I agree with you on every other. Even the abyss, I would say. No, I, they, we're out. And even like the the no, not the abyss. I no, think so. On, no. I think the abyss does a better job. I think. I think. Give the, me all right. The, no, I not think Mouse do. Guy is is be- more <laughs> no, fleshed no, out no, than no, Trudy no, Shakon. Mouse Guy's not. He just has a mouse. mouse so you're like, rules. hey, he's got a mouse. He's got a. That's a thing. That's the guy with the mouse. He's got a thing. It's a mouse thing. What's what, what's his character? He likes his mouse. Yeah. Anything else? 
That mouse, though. But look, you, <laughs> yes, that mouse, though. But also, when you look at Trudy, the Michelle Rodriguez character, you go like, I'm so many unanswered questions. Does she like mice? Does she have one? <laughs> you don't know anything about her. She likes tank tops yeah. and sunglasses. Yeah. And she, she was in, uh, like, four of the Fast and Furious movies. Good at improv. Good at improv. The steak. Yeah. Steak improv. Yeah. A little improv. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's called hey, improv. Fun fact about Michelle Rodriguez. Never on a Lloyd team? Yep. I'm sorry I beat you to that joke. I'm going to give you the 10 comedy points. Oh, thank you. Okay, so Avatar yeah. uh, gets into a fast. Do you like the additional scenes at the beginning? No, I, I, I was going to say, they're good. I think the Earth scenes are terrible. I think they're the worst I addition. Think, get out of that. You know, just get out of it as quick as possible. I, he made the right call just being like, yes, you need this clunky voiceover, but we just got to get through this well, real fast. It's a very utilitarian movie utilitarian. in a certain utilitarian movie in a way because uh, basic storytelling like rules would tell you you need to ground the audience in the real person, in the real world, before you get to the crazy stuff. Sure. And you need to have some characterization before he's thrown into it so we know who he is before the circumstances. But I hate that hacky crap. For, first off, the first five minutes are just really poorly directed. They're they're really ham-fisted. Mm, yeah. I think they feel tonally off. I they just look don't shitty. Like the, the, the future it, Earth isn't as well realized as any of the other stuff oh, he sure. has Oh, you're saying in the added scenes. Right. In the added yeah, scenes. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not, it's not very well... Agreed. He, you know, he, he cut this shit for a reason. Right, it's bad. And then also it is, you have so much stuff to set up where it's like, okay, so if you were going to go through the channels of, here's here's Jake Sully in on Earth, yeah. then this is what it's like on the spaceship before he gets into the Navi body, and then the Navi body. And none of the other stuff matters. The only thing so that matters is get, Pandora get him in the and the Navi. Avatar. Get him in the Navi. The two things you need to get are, what is Pandora? And yeah. you get Stephen Lang, obviously, giving, again, a clunky, very clunky book. Yeah cute-ish, you know, sort of like, I'm the military man, and here's Pandora for you. He's, he's getting through it. I mean, it's almost he's like... He's getting through it. The, the, and then the yeah. Avatar shit, you know. Yeah. This is an Avatar. It's you, and then your brother's twin brother, Gino, whatever, so you can go in it. The first hour of this movie is like orientation week. It's first, like, we just need to set up yeah, where basically. everything is. Well, it's like yeah. multiple orientations. You yeah. got that orientation, and then you have, like, scientist orientation, and then you have Navi, like, you know, or, yeah. That's why I said Navi. orientation week. Because when you go to college, it's like, oh, today you're going to focus on this sort of thing. In uh, in England, you call it fresher week. Oh, okay, so it's like fresher week. Yes. Are you happy? Yes. Okay, so talking tar. Yes. Mm-hmm. Gets up there. They, they go, oh, your brother, he was a hero. He died. Paper in his pocket. We had all this money invested in him. Sure. Pays good. We made this tar in his likeness. Sure. It's really expensive. You're the only one who can operate the tar because you're a twin. Mm-hmm. Guess what? You don't have legs. You got, you got crippled legs, right? Crippled legs. Right. He's got these skinny little legs, and he's mm-hmm. in a wheelchair. And they're like, we could give you this opportunity. You go up to space. You get to walk again. Long blue legs. He's like, okay, sign me up. Although I do like that the movie doesn't make it really clear that part of the appeal might be that he gets to walk around in this avatar until he's in the avatar. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, yeah. They like, don't oversell be great it. great for him. Yeah. They don't oversell it. Uh, gets him into space. Everyone's like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" We don't. We've need all to. trained Move, for no, years. No, no, no. Move, we're moving past it. They put him in the tar. Yeah, yeah. He starts walking. He's freaking out. He, he loves immediately it. is. He's good at it, or whatever. Right. He's a good driver of this alien body that they've made for him. He's the the chosen one. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> for real. And you know why? Because little little fluff ball, little fluffies land on him. Little, little fluffs, fluffies. Little fluffs. Oh, little fluffs. Little tufts of fluff. Little tufts of fluff. Tuff. Just boof and a goof. Just tough. I just uh, tough. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we're, we're the two friends. So you got, you got, you got, you got. Immediately, what I do like about it is it lays out. All right, you have a military element here. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. You know, and they're civilian. I mean, so they're private contractors, so they're especially fucked up people. Right. The you RDA. Know? Yeah, they're just people who want to shoot things. They you want know? obtainium. Then you've got the yeah the business interest which yeah. they want this you know right. Giovanni Ribisi who I think is having a, a blast I think probably the best performance in he's the movie, right? he's he's just a lot of fun he's, a lot. he's just a lot of fun a lot I think Saldana is easily the best oh I agree. yes I but agree. I think yeah. he's he's great yeah, but Ribisi rules I mean like especially because he's got maybe the stupidest thing to do which is to explain to Sigourney Weaver something that obviously her character would be fully aware of which yeah. is that they are mining on obtainium he has to say unobtainium. He has to, like, you know, take her over to his weird little desk and pick it up. I but he know. makes this great character choice, which is he's the one who saddled with so much clunky exposition and yeah. sort of plot building stuff. 
and he makes the character choice of this guy is tired of explaining this stuff. Yes. Oh, God. Which I... makes it funny because all the exposition, he's like, look, you know, we have to go to this planet and he's get on Obtanium. Kind of right. a high voice. We gotta go and get the Unobtainium. There's We're the only moment... here for one. Yeah. Oh, no, of course. Which We've is the best talked about it before. Film. The bit where he's like, all right, come on, scroll, scroll, scroll. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. like trying to make the camera move yeah. on his right. computer. He's like, Mike, can you do that? No, not uh, Mike. Mike, too far, too far. Too far. Ah, Jesus Christ. Great. Yeah, I love tech not quite working. Yeah, it's great. Um, but uh, yeah, the the three factions are he wants unobtainium, right? Which everyone always slams Cameron for like that's so clunky. It's a real scientific term. Yeah, it's a weird example of like real life being written like a James Cameron movie mm-hmm. and seeming too on the nose. But I'm saying it's like an actual thing. It's it's a scientific sort of joke. name for uh, elements that they can't define. Exactly. You know, or like some sort of like if you wanted one day to you know power a warp drive, maybe you could do that with unobtainium, yeah. this magic right. element with this that would somehow possess this property. I don't but, know, but whatever. They know. never say what the value of it is. No, though. they don't. No. Which I like. I kind of like too. But that's what he wants, right? They hire this military group. To try to hey, oh wait I have a question so yes. in music when you sell a bunch of albums is like past platinum <laughs> you you go unobtainium yeah. okay. I'm now looking up unobtainium yeah. on the Avatar wiki to see what it actually does Thriller Thriller went unobtainium it did it, did. <laughs> it was just floating and Giovanni Ribisi was just hitting it um, they need it's I, I mean as you can kind of pick up from the movie yeah they like it's necessary in Earth because Earth has become such a kind of crappy uh, like overmined over it looks really factory shitty. world. Yeah, that like unobtainium is this. I don't know. It's this thing. It's that something we'll... we need. It floats. It floats. Who gives a yeah. shit? But the the idea is that I mean, as Rabisi says, it's the character of the stick. They want the unobtainium. They've hired two different companies to try to different approaches to getting it. So one is Weaver, who's going to be nice. You know, yes, her so Bernie interest, Weaver's character, whose name is uh, Doctor Grace Augustine. Yes, and her uh. Yeah, they're, you know, diplomacy, you know, uh, right. sort of the idea of whatever, like bring like of westernization. Right. You know, yes. it's, it's also a flawed idea. Which sure. I like that the movie. But like, and she has her own vested interest in it, which is that she's a scientist yes. and she's interested in exploring this other culture and their fauna and their mm-hmm. flora and mm-hmm. all of this sort of shit. Yes, she's a, a cosmic botanist. Right. She wants to teach them so that she can be the one on the forefront of this. She's, she's the Jane Goodall of yeah, Navis sure. is what she's trying to be. Girl sure. is in the mist. Right. Tar's in the mist. Yeah. But um, she's been trying to go about it the friendly way. Yeah, Diplomacy, she's, she's... build a bridge, get them to give us some unattainium. For right. what? Right. That's what they can't figure out. The Navi don't want anything. Right. Because you want money? They go, fuck money. No, they're cool. Paper in your pocket? Fuck that. <laughs> you want a vet? Vet gets you what? They go, no, we've seen true lies. That guy's a piece of shit. Well, and like, there's, yeah, sure, there's this ongoing idea that the world, the, the moon of Pandora that they live on is in this like nice, balanced, harmonic state. Yeah. Everything kind of works. And they're like, as it should. If it ain't fixed, don't and break it. And they respect it. that. They if don't want to mess with it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. If it ain't fixed, don't break it. Um, and so the if it hum- ain't tar, don't have a. The humans are messing with that. Yeah. They don't need computers. They've got trees yeah, they plug baby. into. That's right. They do. Trees. Nature's internet. <laughs> <laughs> so then and then so then you've got the military and they're guys, sort of like the uh, well just you know i mean be ready because we might need to fight them and what their vested interest in this is they love fighting shit uh sure they like to point and shoot they're big big gun war people and so they'd love they to have, have like, a good gun war you know they have power suits they have like mechs that they yeah they got power in. loaders but they're called amps in this uh they're mechs it's a it's a mech it looks like know. a power loader yeah, but it doesn't load. It's a mech. But they're the ones in the background at the loading dock that are like doing loading and shit. It's like a power loader. It's kind of like a power loader. Except it's for for fighting too. You but can they carry also... a big knife in one. Well, that but that's I mean Ripley was sort of the original amp because she was like oh, I can load. I'll load a fight onto your ass. You know what sure. I'm saying? Like she took that power loader made it into a fight. No, but I'm just fighting robot. I like aliens more than I like Avatar. Controversial opinion because yeah, the tech take. in aliens okay. is more. Grounded, realistic, practical. practical. Yeah. Yes. The tech in Avatar is not. That's fine. It's uh-huh. more cartoonish. Sure. And uh, it's more, I mean, you've seen that. It's not just, fuck, aliens didn't invent the idea of a, humans in a power suit. That's in, like, every anime, you know, come on. Oh, come on, it's kind of him playing the hits. All right. It's kind of him playing the hits. I don't think so. I think it's him being like, you get this, I don't have to explain it. Great. He's yeah. playing the hits. I like that the mechs have... Like, not a gun attached to their arm, but they pick up a right. giant... Yes. I, like I, like that. That. I like I like that, too. I like that, too. I think it's great. I like that a lot. 
Okay, that's the central setup. Grace Augustine doesn't like Jake Sully. She's like, why am I saddled with this guy? But you know what? What the fuck? Rabisi and Lang, though. Stephen Lang plays Colonel Quatrick. Because Sully used to be a Marine. He's a jarhead, as he self-identifies a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. And Lang is like, I can get through to this guy. Sure, I can. this guy can be helpful. I can activate that military gene in his body. So Lang wants, you know, Quatrick, he wants, he, he says to Jake, look, you can do what she wants you to do. You can drive your avatar, but get in with them and, like, get me info. I want yeah. intel on how to take these guys down. You can help me out. Like, look, their big home tree that they live in is yeah. on the unobtainium deposit, and we're going to go get it. Yes. So he goes in, and you have some adventures on Pandora. Right. Okay. So he goes with them very quickly. Immediately. Again, smart. Don't fucking waste time on this. Yeah. On him being like, oh, how to how to be an avatar. Ooh, how to Wh- pick within up the like plant. two minutes of him in the Tar body on Pandora yep. with Grace and Norm, he like comes face to face with what is the first creature they see the Thanator? The big rhino. Oh right, yes. I don't Whatever know what that one's called. called. And uh and he like sort of chase he he engages with it and then it chases him, he jumps over a waterfall, he gets stranded from the rest of the group. Uh, no, no, it's the rhino. He beats the rhino, or he thinks he's, like, had it submit, but it, then yeah. the Thanator shows up, right, attacks right. the rhino, attacks him. Yeah, he jumps yeah. over a waterfall, then right. it's nighttime. He's going to get eaten by a bunch of little... And the big thing is that, so they're, like, circling around with Trudy in the helicopter, and she's like, they won't let us out past dark. We just got to leave and hope that he's going to be okay. Yeah, totally. So they all go, and he's just alone on on the moon of Pandora. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Fights he's, the viper he's, wolves. He's wet. Yeah, he's going to fight. He's a little wet. Uh, the, and also... This is Cameron showing off, right? Yeah. He's built this big glowy world. Yeah. And it's cool. It's really cool. This can, is where the 3D is important. Can I throw out something too? Because it makes the world seem real. Yeah. Uh, lighting wise, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, because it's all digital, but for whatever reason, anytime there's- This is all mocap, guys. Yeah. And, you know, At this point, the shit. movie is 90% an animated. animated film, yeah. Right. Uh, which is really weird that it's never considered as such. And Cameron like fights that later. Well, oh, this was animated? <laughs> Well, this movie has a lot of live action stuff. It does. Can I throw a counterpoint out to you? I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's your counterpoint? It doesn't? I mean, I don't e- know what you say. Every saying. year, the Alvin and the Chipmunks movies qualify for the best animated feature oh at Oscars. Mm-hmm. They're qualified to be a nominee because there's enough animation for it to constitute being an animated movie. Okay. And those movies are a couple animated characters in a live action world. But isn't this a submission thing? Like, Fox would have to submit it as an animated 100%, movie. hundred yeah. percent, but I'm saying this is more of an animated movie than Alvin the Chipmunks is. But what kind of an argument is that? That doesn't mean anything. It means everything. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean anything at all. It's about the sky. Come on, listen. <laughs> God. David's really loving me today. Ugh. God. I'm coming here to stir up some shit. I'm being a little stinker today. You really are. Um... They, uh, for whatever reason, I think the Navi look really good when they're lit by fire. They do. There are like a bunch of scenes in this movie where fire happens for it's one reason or another. Good entrance. Good, 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 good introduction to the world, right? Yeah. yeah. Like having that scene at night very early on. But I think their skin, the actual texture of the skin, for whatever reason, when the fire light's reflecting off of them, they look more I get you. realistic. It's, I just like all the fire scenes in this I film. think that everything looks pretty realistic considering how cartoonish it is, except for weirdly the Thanator. When I was rewatching, I was like, Thanatos, maybe it's like it's like that it's like jet black. For some reason it just kinda looks a little fakey. Oh see, I like Thanator. Oh my god, you disagree with me on every fucking minor point. But I think some of it I, I was surprised by how much of the film I thought had started to already age a little bit. Yeah, well, we really disagree on everything. Just because I think I technology has moved so fast that we're already like What's a movie now that looks better than this? I mean, I think the Ape Work and the Planet of the Apes movies is like Wow, we're really just opposite ends here. I totally disagree. David's playing the opposite of footsie under the table with me. He's kicking me in the shins. I think the ape work in the Rise and the Dawn yeah. movies are is excellent, but it's you know you're like that's a cartoon. Now, obviously, that has the problem that it's a real thing. I you like know, the Neutron. I love the Neutron, my friend. <laughs> love that Neutron. Love it. <laughs> There were just some moments in this where I just, I see, not even, like, in terms of realism of, like, texture or whatever, but just the limitations of, like, mocap data collection, where some of the movements feel a little bit incomplete to me. Like, they weren't able to pick up on all the subtleties of everything. I just don't think there's a a lot of movies now that look as good as this movie. They really aren't. 
I mean, obviously, the money helps. I mean, yeah. this was a big budget movie. Yeah, they threw a lot of money in it. I just, I mean, this movie was in a lot of ways like a testing ground for technology stuff. Hey, couldn't you argue, mm-hmm. though, that agree. some of the video games that have come out in the last few years look better nope. than this movie? <laughs> well, <laughs> Someone who plays a lot of video games. Ben, did you hear that David doesn't like the moons of Jupiter? <laughs> no, we're not doing that again. <laughs> Don't get we're not started. doing that again. He doesn't even. It's like that. He's like trying to say like Avatar is even like. <laughs> this is right a moon. <laughs> you got to keep that in mind, by the way. Yeah, it's a moon. It's a moon. It's, a it's a moon. like a moon of Jupiter. It's the, a the moon gas of Jupiter. giant. It's yeah. sort of like a blue Jupiter. Yeah. So I'm just going to move us forward. Well, I was going to say, he gets quickly. stranded. He He's gets in survival stranded. mode. He very quickly he comes across Natiri. Meets Natiri. Who rules? Who's, gun, who's great. Great Fucking character. So I saw Donna. She's super cool. One of my best friends. Well, I think you're acquaintances. I know we're pretty close. We hang okay. out like a lot. We don't see each other a lot, but when we do see each other, we hang out like really hard. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. Um, Zoe Saldana plays her, and she's gonna shoot him with an arrow because she thinks he's a big dork. Yeah, who sucks? And which he kind of is. That's what you did to dorks. But then a fluffy fluff lands on her bow yeah. and is like, "Watch out, fluff fluff." Yeah. And so she's like, all right, and it helps him instead. Right. And then a bunch of fluffy fluffs land he's on. He's got him. a pure heart, but he's stupid. You know, again, uh, this is some obvious. Fucking bullshit. Yeah. I cannot deny that there's a bunch of fluffs that land on him, and that means that everyone has to be chill with him. But the movie's just fucking, it's trucking. It's just it. like, yeah, whatever, it's like, man. Let's just get to you it. You got a problem? Yeah. Fuck you. I mean, it is, it's very Last of the Mohicans, uh, yeah. which is about uh, like a, a white man who is raised, you know, in the Mohican tribe. And like, so, you know, right? It's like the outsider who learns their ways. And is then like one of the people. It's a cultural appropriation movie because yeah. he literally gets in the body of the other people. And the movie explores that tension to some extent, to and some then extent. eventually decides to drop it because it's got action to get to. And this is a three act movie with you know the typical like they reject him and then they accept him again. And, and it like, turns structure. out this white outsider is better at everything than they are. And isn't he the <laughs> one that essentially ruins the day for them because he's like their inside man? Like, nah, I mean, I mean like both. It he was going to happen it, but he anyway. Saves he doesn't it. really ruin it. Yeah, know, honestly, one of my biggest problems with the movie is that moment where they're all like, "You betrayed us." It's like, well, no. Like, it's not like he went and told them like, you know what you should do is blow up the home tree. They were going to do that yeah. anyway. Yeah. He didn't really do anything at all. They were all about that unobtainium. That's the thing. I mean, they were going to get there by hook or by crook. I mean, he gave them a map to the inside of the tree, but how yeah. useful is that? They just blow up the tree. Well, and like, Quaritch is constantly like, getting me good intel. But then you watch the intel and he's like, their people are interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah know? the intel's like, they live in a tree. Right. And I ride horses, and I have a, I have yeah. a flying thing yeah. that I fly around. Yeah, I on. think that one's cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I date the chieftain's daughter. Right. And she's nice to me. It's a good intel. The other guy doesn't, apparently the chieftain's doesn't daughter like is single. <laughs> we got everything we need to go in now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, so like, I mean, obviously James Cameron is quote unquote getting away with everything the, the themes we're talking about because this is about blue people, right? So yeah. it doesn't have to be about one particular culture that is being invaded. But it's also, you see a lot but of, of course, similarities between... all of them. There are a lot of similarities between sort of tribal cultures across our world throughout history. I mean, I mean he's using a lot of iconography. You, he's hitting a lot of just different eras of colonialism. Correct. For sure. But this is also a movie about colonialism's ills. Yeah. You know, and obviously this is a film where humanity is a great evil that needs to be destroyed. Yeah. And it's to me, very much a film about the Iraq War. I think it incredibly yeah. obviously, and like was made in the shadow of the Iraq War, and like I think the imagery is like very powerful in that regard. I agree. You know, some of the other stuff is yeah, it's broad and goofy. Uh, yeah. The, there's there's forest people who sleep in hammocks and they respect the earth and nature. But and, the hammocks hug them. Yeah, the nice little hammocks. I mean, it's and then he, of course he. Being James Cameron, he can't resist having their religion not be some vague amorphous goddess or whatever, but this idea that, like, yeah, that, hey, nature's internet, baby. Yeah. That all the trees are linked to each other, yeah. so you just plug into that tree. I mean, it's a good selling point because other religions are like, hey, you just got to believe. And this one's this like, like, oh, you haven't met God? She's over there. Yeah, she's, she's that tree. The tree. <laughs> just plug your hair into her. You should go, you should go hair fuck God. Yeah, yeah. You want to do that right now? Now- if a religion was promising me on earth that I could fuck God, God, I would become the most religious person in the world. I think everyone would. I mean, right? this is not a movie where you see people who are like, you know, I don't really believe in Awa. <laughs> eh. I mean, you know, my parents believed in it, so I go I go to Awa High Holidays, but I'm not really an Awa I, believer. I hope that Avatar 4 is about <laughs> Navi atheists. Maybe, maybe Avatar 2 is going to be about them having kids, and the kids yeah. are like, eh, Awa's overrated. 
What, like Avatar Satanists, they fuck rocks instead. <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. no, there's no like Satan. No, there's no like bad. I mean, white man. Well, yeah, white great man's Satan. devil, the great yeah. Satan, right? Giovanni Ribisi, the greatest yeah, Satan Giovanni of all. Ribisi, Stephen Lang, baby, one yeah. two punch of yeah. evil white guys. So the middle, or well, no, this is a pretty long movie. So I'd say like the middle first. I don't know. The sort of long extended first Everything act. we've talked about is just the first act of five, I would say. I'd say there are five acts in this movie. Well, it's like intro. I would say this is more like a high school essay. You got intro, paragraphs one, two, and three, <laughs> conclusion. I love that. Dude. It's five acts. <laughs> but like the, 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 I'm saying the, the intro, act, sure, acts sure, on the sure, side are pretty sure, small. Sure. Because like the real first act of the movie, you could watch this movie and put an intermission probably. Yeah. This is like a two intermission movie if mm-hmm. you really want it to be. Put in a mission right when he flies, when you know, like when he yeah. quote unquote becomes one of the people. Right. But this, uh, this all act, the training yes. shit, you know. This next chunk of the movie. movie is that she brings him back to her people, and they're like, "What the fuck is this?" And he's a like, sky fluffs, person, fluffs, fluffs. yeah, sky person. person. He's a Fluff devil, the and they're like, "What's your deal? What she's, tribe are you from?" She's got a mean. Uh, oh yeah, he says he's in the Jarhead tribe. You like that? But he said no. It's that he says he's a warrior, yeah. and they're like interesting. They've never mm. sent us. But also the fluff. But also the fluff. But the fluff. But it's those two things together. Right. They're like that's bizarre because they've only ever sent these doctors, these teachers. Which we're not going to teach them how to ride the horses and the right. Birdies these seemingly and all peaceful that stuff. people. There's a new approach here. So like we got to get close and keep our friends close, enemies closer, figure out what's going on. Also the fluffs. We can't argue with the fluffs. Fluffs are big. He's got a crush on Natiri. Well, she's got it? a, a bet- she's betrothed to Sutse. Sutse. Yeah, Sutse. Who is Sute. played Sute. by uh, Lorenzo Zano? La- Wait, is it Lazo Lanzo? It's not Lorenz Tate. It's Laz Alonso. You're right. It's not Lorenz Tate. I, I, I get those names confused. Me too. Uh, Laz Alonso, who he's in like, what, is he in the fourth Fast and Furious? Yeah, he's in he's, one. He's in stuff. He's a he? guy. Let's see him. He's a guy. He's pretty good. He's I like, a good actor. I, like su- I think he's good in this. Uh, I think because I think he's pushing through the, the mocap. He's doing a good job. Uh, let's see. Wait, he was, yes, he's in the fourth one. So, uh, and you, oh, you meet the, 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 oh, he was in 38 episodes of Mysteries of Lore. That's, a, that's the thing I was thinking. Right. He's actually very cute in there. Yeah. Um, you got CCH Pounder plays Moat, the, uh, the, like the sort of, I don't know, the shaman, the village elder, she's right? She's good. In she's this. terrific. She's I mean, so CCH Pounder is an amazing, amazing actor. Do we know what the CCH stands for? Uh, Carol Christine Hilaria. That's cool. Love CCH Pounder. Seriously. One of the greatest TV actresses ever. Not awesome. not in as many movies as she maybe could be or like should be, but she's in so many yeah. cool TV she's shows. She's on NCIS. Uh... That's not really what I would lead with. NCIS New Orleans. I mean the the <laughs> ER and yeah. the Shield. Uh, those are two like two definitive TV performances great. for me. Um, and then uh, West Study. Yes, who's uh, a Native American actor. Yes, who is he's in so many movies. He's Sphinx, in the Last of the Mohicans. Mystery Man. He's in the Last Mohicans. He's in uh, so good in Last the New Mohicans. World. Yes, yeah. I think he's often brought on uh, for those movies, especially also as like a bit of a consultant. Sure, I think and he in Avatar, serves double duty. He is Navi. Yes, uh, no, he he's, Navi. he's a two Khan. He's the clan leader or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, he's he's a great actor. Meet all these folks, but I mean, the main thing is learn how to ride a horse. Learn how to use your hair plug. Right. You pl- you plug your hair into shit. That's, the parents are like, look, you know what? Fine, he can stay. Let's get him close. Figure out what's going on. He can learn our culture. Natiri, that's your job. And she's like, Mom, right. Dad, right. I got to hang out with this guy. And he's like, wink, 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 wink. And then they start hanging out. She's giving him the lessons, the ropes. Sute's a little mean to him. It takes like 50 minutes. I mean, like 50 minutes of the movie are just sort of like him. Yeah, but I think this is brilliant. Well, it's all visually stunning stuff. No, but I also think it's, you need it because yeah. you need to feel how bad it is when, when you know, the attack happens. 100%. The, yeah. I mean, you need the whole, to be in the world. The whole key of the movie is to get you in this world, and yep. it's also to uh, explain all the rules of everything now so at the last hour you can have almost no dialogue and just go breathlessly totally. through everything totally. with shorthand already in your back pocket. Totally. So good. Um, and it's, it's well done stuff. Uh, you know, maybe leans a little bit too much on voiceover. A lot of voiceover. Uh, which the device, of course, is that he's talking to the camera yeah. for his, like, uh, science log. Oh, come on, guys. I like Who it. doesn't love a good confessional? <laughs> Me too. I like it. I'm into it. Um, I wish I we got more gossip. Ben, I'm surprised <laughs> he's good at gossip. I'm surprised we haven't talked about the the most <laughs> prominent element of this film and the one I expect you to react most strongly what's, to. What's that? The Navi are big, baby. 
Oh, yes, like you're 10 right. 10 feet tall. I did notice that. <laughs> they are very they, hard to kill. There's humans. <laughs> then there's Navi. They're bigger. Yeah. Big and skinny. Mm. Like a person, but bigger. You know, you see their hands by our heads. And what's cool about that, you're seeing it on the big screen. I didn't get to see it on the big yeah. screen. But you're seeing it on the big screen. You're like, damn, those hands are huge. <laughs> I'm like this movie was designed for dummies like me. <laughs> this is basically just like, oh, they're blue. It's 3D. They're big. All right, let's do it, kids. So Quaritch comes to Jake Sully. Kids, <laughs> yeah, bring the kids. We got a big old blue movie. J- Jake's in love with with all the Navi culture. He's getting in deep, right? Yeah, he's in love with and he's and he's falling head over heels with Natiri. And uh, Grace is like, yo, watch out. You got to keep a separation between work and play. She's not really like that. Church and state. In the extended version, there's yeah. the scene they have where she then talks about she ran the school for the Navi, trying to teach them, and it resulted in a massacre that killed Natiri's sister. Yeah. Which I think is a very good scene that uh, Sigourney crushes. Sigourney does a good job. Thank God they cut it, in my opinion. I think it's a good scene. I would have kept that in. I, I think it's it's too much info tilting Natiri against... Uh, the ultimate decision she's going to make. I think they did a good job. I think it helps her character a lot. I disagree. We we just were disagreeing on everything. Everything. Uh, I thought you were saying like she gave him the talk. You know, like the the How, like like talk well, about the Turoks the, and the floating the other tree thing, things. Well, no, 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 but no. The other thing is we should say in the extended edition, the, the sex the scene fluffies. is way longer. Yeah. And they like they join their hair together and they go like, Ooh. yeah. There's a moment where she goes, oh, oh, yeah, which uh, is uh, uh, again very wisely cut. No, oh, it should have yeah. been even longer. That's gross. I slowed it down when I watched it. <laughs> um, oh boy. The, the, uh, the she has this little relationship because she starts out hating him and she has this little like beat with him where she's like, look, I know what's happening. Like I remember it too when I first started tarring, and it's pretty addictive. But you got to understand, like, this is just a thing. This is a part of life. You got to have some time for yourself. You can't get too deep into this. Right. I don't like that. I like it. I don't because, again, I feel like that's not what the movie's about. The movie is not about, like, the dangers of him getting lost in his avatar. We know that him getting lost in the avatar is the right thing for him to do. And we're totally on board with him, like, leaving his dumb flesh body behind because it sucks. But that's why I like it. Body. But eat makes your eggs. Different. Drink some coffee. No, I mean, definitely eat your eggs and drink some coffee. Yeah, and take a, get, get take a shot. Take you. care of yourself. Yeah. Um, uh, Do you think they can poop in the in the chamber, in the, like, uh, the coffins, the sarcophagi? You know what? They didn't deal with that at no, all. They didn't deal with it. Mm. They don't do a lot of that, too, where it's like. Like, it'd be funny if, like, they open and they're like, whew. <laughs> Yeah, go on. Yeah. Well, they don't establish like the kind of matrix rules of like if you die in the matrix, you die here kind of stuff. No, because like, you don't. If right. you die in the in the avatar, you do wake up. And you don't feel thing. great. When she's saying that, like you know, he he, um, what you call, uh, losing weight, and he's like, I just ate a big feast there, and she's like, Gotta take care of this body because sure, it's like sure. that food doesn't translate. Right. Do you think if he takes a shit, like if he feels like he needs to take a shit, and he takes a shit in the Navi world, and he's like, good, got that off my deck, and then he wakes up and he's got like a full load, he has to. I think he has to go take care of that. Hey, you know what? Tweet right? at us, yeah. guys. Yeah, tweet uh, yeah. Let us Definitely. Know. Avatar, hashtag Avatar Dump. Just do it, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Poopatar? Avatar. <laughs> oh. Tweet Avatar at us. All right, so. What I like about that thing that is set up in the Grace Augustine scene is that it, it does show that is the difference with him where everyone else, it is just a job, and this is the life he's going to take. The fact that she's like, you got to keep a distance between work and life. You can't get too deep into this stuff. He's the one guy who actually has nothing going for him in his outside life. He's ready to go all in on this shit. Sure. Absolutely. Makes I like sense. her giving him the warning because then it makes it clear that it's like, you know, he's the exception. Okay, fine. Different, different, difference of opinion. You like bagels? Love bagels. Cool, cool. Ah. We're friends again. We're always friends. We're the God best friends. It. We're the two friends. Fucking hell. Fucking hell, we're the two all friends. All right, so she flies. That's a big deal. Yeah. He, he gets his little pterodon or whatever. Yeah, they call them banshees, but that's like sort of the colloquial name for owl cards or something. It's like owl, Leopteryx. I... Yeah. And I looked up Leopteryx is like a specific, is one of them. There's another name these, but they call them banshees colloquially, is what they call the dragons. Leonopteryx. Uh, and then um, they, uh, they she, she talks about Turok, foreshadowing. She shows them the Turok skull. Yeah, there's one scene of foreshadowing, just so you get who that is. Right, and you also are then able to understand Turok the first flight. 
Um, well, of course, they needed to set up Turok the first fight, which would eventually hit Arena seven years later. Right. They needed to set that up. Right. Turok Ta, this is the guy's last show. He's the biggest one. My God great forbid, grandfather. God forbid that show do any any heavy lifting with this yeah. storytelling. <laughs> Then my grandfather, he he was the first Turk Todd. There have only been like four or five since then. If you do that, unite the tribes. Turuk, da, da, da. It's Turuk Makto. Turuk Makto. Why do I keep on saying Turuk Tom? I don't know. Rider of the Last Shadow. Turuk Makto. Makto. Right, Makto. Okay, so uh, all that He gets his stuff. own. She's like, look, this is no easy thing. Uh, unlike riding a dire horse, if you're linking up with a banshee, it's, like, yeah, it's for a permanent, life. Permanent connection. So he has to go and kind of like he wrestles one. Wrestle I think one that headlock. scene is fantastic. It's good. The whole scene where you know, and then the flight he takes, and again in the 3D, Cameron, like few directors, gets like 3D works best with negative space. It works yeah. best when you're you know to give a sense of being in the thing. air. Yeah. Lots of like yeah zoomed out shots. I mean him and Michael Bay, they're the only ones who get how do you use spatial 3D? geography. Cameron's got a killer sense of spatial geography. It's the best. You need that for 3D. Yep. Um, okay, so that's where you say, like, the intermission would happen. That's intermission one. Intermission right. two. And then they fuck after that? Yeah, because she's like, okay, so you're one of the people now. Like, he, because Stephen Lang's, uh, Quatrick's giving him the, like, that's what I'm trying we're, to remember we're moving the, in. We're moving in. Does that happen before or after the fucking? No, it's before. Okay. He says, we're moving in, and, and Jake Sully's like, well, I, I have my one last investiture, you know, my bar mitzvah, He's like, I got real legs for you. You can go back to Earth, be able Today, to walk again. Yeah, Why don't you right get on now. that flight? Leave now. And he's like, Ugh, I got I my really finals. have my bar mitzvah yeah. to get to. So right. He and has his bar mitzvah. And he's like, if I get the bar mitzvah, I'll be able to convince him to do anything. Give me, l- at least let me stay for that. So he does the bar mitzvah, and then Nateri is like, now you can pick a mate. Blah is the best singer, which I think is First, he has to sign cute. the candles. My first candle goes to my father for always supporting me and all of my interests. Dad, you're the best. Like to bring up to the stage, Robert Sully. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Da, 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 da. Da 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 da, feeling hot, hot, hot. Didn't and then Robert Sam Sully Worthington... walks up, does a little dance, lights the candle. What? Doesn't Sam Worthington what? Isn't he Jewish? He played a Jew in uh, The Debt or whatever that movie was. Yeah, he called. did. There's that crazy casting in that movie where he's supposed to grow into Kieran Hines. <laughs> Look, maybe he just really, really laid into the, the booze and the, the, the fatty food. Those are two very different faces. And the, the 60 cigarettes a day. Kieran Hines has Kieran a Hines lot has a of face. Kieran Hines has a 60 cigarette a day face. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but like not like he's like just he's smoking. he's kind of a cigarette. And not just that he's smoking out of the mouth, but like he's sticking cigarettes in his eye holes and his nostrils. Like he's smoking out of the full face. I love I love Kieran Hines. He's a great actor. Uh, anyway, he becomes one of the people. Yeah, the bulldozers roll in after he has sex with Nateri. Right. Well, let's not gloss over that. Yeah, let's get into it. They fuck each other's braids out. But how? <laughs> oh, boo! No, come on! I'm gonna <laughs> say Ben three comedy Thank points. You. <laughs> Thank you. The bulldozers come in. Yeah, this is the most Fern Gully scene. Yes. Uh, and he smashes the camera, which I think is, is, is cool. Now, let's point something out about the bulldozers. Pretty uh, pretty cool. <laughs> Boy. Go on. We're not even tired. Go on. You know they're what? huge. You know what I liked about those bulldozers? Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're so big. Yeah, they're okay. big. I mean, a lot of big things yeah, in this. Speak on that, Ben. <laughs> All right. Well, it reminded me sort of of like Mario Brothers, uh, the third one. You know that last Super level? Mario Brothers three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Where it's like the big ass ship. Like I love I don't those know. ships. Reminded uh-huh. me of a huge ship. Like the uh, that's what I got. Great. I, Thank you, Ben. I agree. So I like all this stuff in the movie. Yeah, me too. But I love like everything post. I like love everything yeah. post bulldozer when things get real. That's where I think the movie cashes in its. Blank. Yeah, I agree. The movie spends an hour and a half investing you, you know, get, it it makes you put a bunch of coins in the slot machine so right. that it can pay out in the last hour and, and it, a half. And it, and it does. You're this. spending a lot of money, and they're asking you to invest a lot of faith in them. It's not dissimilar to Titanic, which does, like, no. a lot of legwork and sometimes can be a little corny, um, but then, you know, it works because it and pays I think, off so well. Uh, Inception does a similar thing where it's like, stick with the us best. for the first chunk, the and best. then the last half we're, it's pure play. We're going to give you all the fun. Love Inception. Love Great Inception. Great movie. Let's do Christopher Nolan right now. Yeah. Right now. Uh, yeah. In the middle of this episode. Intermission. Following. <laughs> nine episodes. Christopher Nolan. 1998's following. Nine films? Does he have nine films now? It sounds about right. That's a good I, I'd have to. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, then, you know, they, like, realize, they watch the video footage, they realize it's him turning on them. 
They pull the plug. They pull They're the plug, out. put him in jail. Yeah. Uh, they plug him back in for a second because he's like, I'm the only one who can help you. That scene is a Let's little Let's give Michelle Rodriguez her due. She breaks him out of jail. No, no, no. That hasn't happened yet. They plug him back in because he tries to negotiate with them at the oh, home right. tree. Yes. That's when they like tie him up and tie yes. Grace up. Yeah. Uh, and then they unplug him again, put him in jail. They unplug and plug like four times Couple in the times. last hour and a half. They yeah. do a lot of that, which is funny because they're like, no, you can't do that. Yeah. It doesn't seem to have any But it intent. keeps on happening where the military's like, we're, <laughs> we're going like, to plug him. Get him out of here. And then they're like, don't unplug him, don't unplug him. They unplug him. He's like, what's going on? They're like, you're unplugged. And he's like, wait a second. Plug him back in. No. <laughs> like, I love that <laughs> it's like, all about PR too. Like, it's just yeah. like, because we'll look like bad guys if we slaughter a Me race too. of people. I like that too. Yeah. That there is some kind of, uh, like, that's that's what they're worried about. But they keep on plugging him back in and going, like, wait, he's doing the opposite of what he told us he was going to do. <laughs> God unplug damn it. Him. Unplug him. Get him you out can't of there. do that. You can't do it. They unplug him and he's like, sorry, sorry, sorry. Plug me. Plug me back plug in. Plug me though. in though. No, okay, so they lock him up. And then, uh, then the home tree destruction happened. Yeah, which while is he's probably up. I mean I the think the best sequence in the film. I agree. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Gaspar Noé said he cried. He sobbed during the sequence. I'm with you, theater. Gaspar. Yeah, I'm with you, fucking. I, I sobbed when you jizzed in my eye during love. Yeah, very similar scene. <laughs> That's a real movie. That was another use of 3D. Yeah, the jizz flying in my eye. Yeah. Uh, you heard of this movie, Ben? I I familiar with that uh, director. He did that movie about ayahuasca. Yeah. That's cool as fuck. Enter the void. But I haven't seen the sleazy sex movie, no. Hey, it's not sleazy. It's beautiful. Oh. It's called Love 3D. It's probably a 6 out of 10. Oh, the <laughs> movie with 3D good. come flying yes, is that's what classy. Yes, that's what we're talking oh, about. I'm so sorry. Right. So the home tree sequence, that's where I really, I mean, obviously a lot of people point to the 9-11 imagery yeah. of like the big tree collapsing and all that. And that's for sure. But also I really, to the shock and awe shit, like it really did feel like war movie stuff to well, me. Well, and here's the other thing that happens at this sequence of the movie. I mean, there's a lot of Iraq war reference. Because, like, yeah. Michelle, you go, freaking daisy cutters. Yeah. I wish I could do her perfectly. Yeah. She'd be freaking such a fun... Freaking daisy cutters. Freaking daisy cutters. Freaking daisy cutters. Uh, there's also, at this point in the film, there's been a little foreshadowing, get a little bit of sprinkling, but this is where uh, a major element of the film comes into full bloom for the first time. What? You know what it is. I, I don't. Dun -na -na. So good. Dun -na -na. Dun. Ah, it's the best. Because up until then, it's he's been, been like. Horner's been teasing you. He's been teasing he's you. Been working and sometimes the you shaft. get a little like. Dun -na. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe Sometimes a you get a. Dun -na. But yeah, it's true. He really waits to deploy his big theme. A lot of the score is repurposed from the new world. It has very similar we, themes. With a little bit of uh, Titanic thrown in there. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Until you get to the war stuff and then the dun -na -na overwhelms and the da -na, na na fucking rules his new world score by the way is one of his best i love that oh i score agree so much that's what my like score. number one get oh. out of a panic attack totally listen good. yes good to let relax i love too. it yeah. and he hates the movie and thinks that malik <sighs> fucked it up because he wrote the score for different sections of the movie and then malik was like but what if <laughs> like he chose different cues for different parts Composers. and then re-edited the whole horner's thing. an ordinary bastard though he's he got in a huge fight with jim cameron i know he's Motherfuckers dead, dead. r.i.p love you james Horner. he was an ordinary bastard he gets in a big fight with everybody. Uh, he was very precious about his work, and then you listen to it, and it's like, oh, this is that same score he did a couple times. He, he would. He was a, one of the many composers out there who, yeah, sometimes reuses people a little bit. He's uh, got some themes he reuses. A little bit, a little bit of Tom Newman. But he comes up with this very simple, very effective avatar thing <laughs> that makes <laughs> you, and it simultaneously feels ominous and like kind of scary and triumphant. Mm -hmm. So all the times, like whether it's the humans getting an upper hand on the Navi, and you're like, oh shit, and it's like, <gasps> da -na -na -na, and it's like Jawsy. And then the times when the Navi are coming up, it's like, da -na -na -na, and you feel like, yeah, fuck the Navi, fuck yeah, Navi. I love the battle scene so much. So, you know, like he, so, I mean, after this, it's all, it's all war. It's all war. It's all uh, out it's, war, Michelle yeah, Rodriguez frees them from prison, takes them back to the, to the floating mountain. Yeah, she's cool. She makes it clear that she's in. a friend. She has that great bit where she points the gun at him. She's like, yeah, you know what that is. It's yeah. a great, great little. It's a gun. Great little. I'm Michelle Rodriguez. You know me. You've seen me in like 10 movies. Even if you don't know my name. I you know who season I am. two of Lost. Yeah, you watched fucking season two of Lost. Everyone's watching Lucia, it. Anna Lucia, baby. I might be the reason you stopped watching, but you were watching at that time. I was just a real bummer for too much of the show. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't. They didn't get me to heal my character. Basically, they, they did her dirty on that show. They did a little ultimately. Bit. Well, I don't think they ever paid her off. What? Uh, you mean the character? Anna Lucia. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they always wanted her to be a one-season deal. I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting what they're... Yeah, you're right. I think they did it a little bit. I think it shows what a bad job they did with Anna Lucia that when they kill her off, spoiler alert, guys, yeah. um, they have to kill off another character because they realize not, no one was really going to care. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> like, no one would be really sad that Anna Lucia was. You dead. know, I never watched Lost. Should I get into it? David yeah, it's loves so good. it. Yeah, okay. I, I just start it from the top. Uh, no, I'd say start with the last episode, then work backwards. Definitely. Oh. No, 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 no. Uh, you know, last first, penultimate second. You know, like that. Just work, work, work from both the ends. Middle. Like, like hey, eating a hot dog from both like ends. Like Plat Atlas the novel. <laughs> <Yeah>. Great. Thanks, <laughs> Nesting dolls. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, all the war shit's just cool. Yeah, it just rules. It's really well done, uh, especially in 3D. It was just super immersive. I mean, this movie just, uh, you know, took you into a, a place. Yeah, have you heard the story about Steven Spielberg? Uh you know, Cameron showed Spielberg this movie before yeah. while he was still working on it. Mm-hmm. And the scene, I think it's the scene where we should say, you know, Jake plugs himself into A1 and says, like, this, look, my world's really shitty and they're not nice people and they might come fuck up, you know. And she's like, planet. wait a second, who the fuck told you you could do that? And he was like, literally everyone says you can fuck the tree. <laughs> and she's like, no, no, I know they said you can fuck the tree, but I mean, like, that, like, morally that you can do. You can't just go to A1 and be like, hey, fight this war for me. Well, he does. And he does. There's, you know, so, you know, when, as the big war is playing out, all the animals and the birds, like, suddenly emerge from the forest. When and, she's, like, like hiding behind a tree and she's and got she's her like, arrow. Anyone you think has she's heard fu- you. Yeah, which that is a great moment. Apparently Spielberg, like, stood up in the, in the cinema and was like, yeah, like that. I love Steven Spielberg. He, I've heard so many stories about him being like that, like, being, like, a really active participant in movies. Yeah. Uh, and also, you know, the, the paranormal activity story? Which one? Oh, where he made the them take the film and put it in a garbage bag. He, and no, throw it he out. showed up with the film in a garbage bag and said, "Like, I don't want to watch this again. Like, take it away. Like, this scared me too much." But there's the, the thing with this movie is it's so fucking earnest, very earnest, and it's so fucking dorky. I forgot how dorky this it's, movie is. It's, it's it's quite dorky, you know. But it's like that's the thing is just he's got no shame about it. It's like uh, you're talking to your friend's dad, and he's like, well, you know, I write a little on the side. And it's like, you write? He's like, yeah, I've been writing a little sci-fi novel. And it's like, can I read it? And he sends you the manuscript, and you're like, I can't believe he put all this time into developing this world. <laughs> yeah. And it feels like James Cameron is just like someone's dad who wrote this crazy sci-fi like novel. It's, it's a melding of like so many of his goofy interests. Yeah. But then with stuff where you're like, oh, you like this too this kind of goofy spiritual shit yeah like this is what you're into now yeah it's I mean, just like one of the least cynical movies ever. it made. is but that's what i love about it is that it does feel like he's like yeah kind of chilling out a little bit yeah becoming a little more of like a hippie dad yeah he's like he's sick of humans and like machines and all that stuff and he's right? also just like fuck you this is cool i don't care and you're like that's a little dorky jim and he's like no fuck you it's he's cool. like fuck you i spent 500 million dollars and you're like yeah it was worth yeah, it yeah I, yeah I guess i mean what are some things in those fine i mean i love all the quatrick stuff we should stephen lang's really good in the movie really good yeah uh and i feel like he's well he's really cool in um don't, the movie, breathe. don't breathe that just yeah. came out this year i feel like i was Excellent gonna say i feel like he hasn't gotten quite enough like splash like over like, spillover <laughs> yeah. from this movie but that that but feels like great. the first really substantial role he's had since then, which right? is a bummer because he's a really good actor. Everyone always talks about him as Cable as being he looks like Cable. Yeah, he'd be a good Cable. He'd be fine. He'd be, yeah. I don't know that he'd be good, but I, I think he'd, he'd do a be, good job. I just don't care. Yeah, me neither. Um, but I love all the scenes where he holds his breath. Yeah, does a thing, and yeah. then it's finally like, all right, and puts on the breathing mask. All this Cameron stuff, you know, like where he's like, "This is how the tech works." Yeah, do you get it? Then I'm gonna play with it later. Like, yeah. you know, you're going to see people holding their breath and losing their breath. Yeah. You're going to see how the Avatar, like, you come in and out of it. We'll do fun things with that. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't yeah. really talk about, uh, the be- like, the lead military guy. That's who we're talking about right now. Oh, it is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know people by names. I get sure, confused. Sure, dude. No, He's cool. fucking awesome. He's yeah, like he's a great. throwback. He's great. Yeah. He's so he- good. Yeah. All right, so let's start over again. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I podcast you. <laughs> I podcast you. I don't know. I just think he's. I think he's. I think he's. His performance works because at a certain point, when Jake's like, when Jake says like, "Look, you lost. This didn't work." He should just be like, "Yeah, fuck it. I mean, I this isn't a war. Like, I don't care. Yeah. Like, why not just go home and make more money or keep you know?" And instead, he's like, "No. Like, I am an asshole. I just want to win." I will say. I mean, I don't know if I'm jumping the gun here a little bit, but like, jump the gun. The characters in this movie are are writ large, right? They're broad. They're broad sort of characterizations. And the best Uh, performances in the film are the actors who realize that and just play big. Which is mostly the supporting actors, like Sigourney, Stephen Lang, Giovanni. Right. Um, The 
thing, you know, he's Cameron started teasing out details of the sequels. He's had like a writer's room set up like a TV show. Yeah. He has four writers' teams. All of this is what makes me nervous. They're but, writing yeah. four screenplays at the same time. Right. And he has like the broad strokes, the broad characters he wants to introduce. He has all that sort of in his head. Right. And then you get these little teases and he's like, one of the movies is going to be all about underwater stuff. And you're like, okay, uh, okay what does that mean? <laughs> And then it's like, Sounds it's, like James Cameron. Right. It's going to be like Jake and Atiri's kids. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck? Uh, but, but I do feel like watching this movie now, people talk a lot about, there's this dumb thing of like, Avatar made $2 billion and no one even talks about it today. It left no cultural impact. Right. And I was watching and I was like, well, it is. I mean, the fact that everyone keeps on talking. $2.7 billion. Yeah, which is insane. Yeah. The fact that everyone keeps on talking about the movie leaves no uh, leaving no cultural impact proves that point wrong. Because everyone's constantly talking about the movie. I don't know about constantly. I do. There's some argument to the fact that, like, you'd think maybe it'd have a little more of a footprint, and it feels more like it was like this huge wonder at the time that didn't linger quite as much. We we'll I, talk about it next week. We did go to Taruk the first flight. Yes, 100. percent The audience was not I hugely would say, into it. Hugely dialed. But, but in. I want to tell you, I think I finally identified why that is. Why it feels like it left less of a cultural imprint than other movies of its size. It's because this isn't a character-driven movie. The things that sure. usually really elevate and, and deepen um, a, a society's relationship to a work of art is when they become really invested in aspects of it, right? So it's like you can fucking ship these two characters or make your fan art or buy the thing or whatever it is, right? Yeah. And this movie like, it is so uh, total in terms of like it's a full experiential thing. But there aren't sort of like iconic scenes or lines or characters in the same kind of way, you know? Like people weren't like fucking crazy about Natiri. They were like, no. Zoe Saldana is really good in that. Maybe, but Natiri but... didn't become no. like Ray, you no. know? No. And there's no scene in the movie that became like, you know, the iconic thing. It's cool when she shoots him full of arrows. Right. You can't really kind of s separate this movie into pieces. No. It's just I, you sit in right. the theater in 3D right. and watch it's the Avatar, whole thing. And of course it was a, a great cinematic experience. Yeah. And I think it does say something that when Avatar hit DVD and stuff, they were like, 3D TVs. Everyone's going to want a 3D TV. Nobody wants no. a 3D TV. There was something, but especially for a movie that long, you want to sit in a theater in silence in a dark room with a lot of people and all feel the collective like awe of the thing. But I think, you know, I, I think you compare Avatar and Force Awakens and you can argue which is better, and which is worse or whatever. But like every there's so many different aspects of Force Awakens that people really latched on to, you know? Mm -hmm. That like they like carried with them, and there were things that you could fucking gif and meme, but things you could also write Force about. Force Awakens had, but I mean, it has a lot going for it. Star Wars, all of that in general being one of. But yeah. of course, it does feel a little more correctly geared towards like, yeah. And then we'll have the game, and we'll have the toys, and we'll have you know. Well, ooh, and that's creating cards. I'm and... not saying one's better or one's worse, and I kind of, in a way, respect the fact that Avatar is like so unconcerned with that, and it's just like right. we're just making a movie. They're different. You're, you should sit here and watch this. But movie. also, they have totally different challenges. Avatar yeah. is trying to introduce you to something, and Force Awakens is trying to get you back into something, and you know, trying to erase. Some of the prequels, and you know, I think a lot of a movies big of this with. size today are sort of pre-packaging fandoms, which this movie doesn't concern itself with doing. Yeah. So it feels like Avatar hasn't left a cultural footprint because there's so much else we're having where it's like, well, this is made to fucking like make Cumberbatch fans happy, or you know, like to hint at that thing that these <laughs> this specific sect of fandom within this fandom of this one property just like this one element, yeah, you know, or this one relationship or whatever it is. This movie is just like, we're just telling a real straight middle of the road dad novel story. Yeah. The characters Lots are all... Eakins, yeah. One and, of the first, like, novels. And most of the characters just serve a function. Like, the characters are sort of like narrative cogs, you know, mm -hmm. rather than characters you're going to really, like, love. Mm -hmm. Where I get excited about the idea of Avatar sequels is him just making further stories in this world, spanning sort of legacies and years and what have you. Rather than, like, the continuing adventures of Jake and Atiri. Yeah, I can't Im We're not going to get the continuing adventures of Jake and Atiri, I think it are can't we? Be. I, Maybe Avatar 2. Like, I love Zoe Saldana. I mean, if you're making five, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you might have to give it to Avatar 2. That's it. I love Zoe Saldana, and I think she's phenomenal in this movie. I'm not really invested in Atiri that much. Well, all right. So, here, all right. So, let, I'm going to cut you off yeah, here. Just please. Let's go back into the film. Yeah. Well, we're almost done with the movie. Yeah. But. Uh, just in terms of the sequel, obviously, I always say, like, hey, if he wants to make Avatar sequels, he can make them, and I'm excited. Yeah. I will say, having seen Taruk the first flight, I think the humans are a good thing 
to have in Avatar. I agree. And I do worry what will happen if maybe they're not in the new ones. Now, maybe they will be. I have no I, I don't know. Like, yeah. I, you know, you hear Stephen Lang's going to be in them, so, like, who knows? And Sigourney Weaver. And Sigourney Weaver's always like, but she's always like, I'm in it, baby. And they're like, how? And she's like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to be in it. James like, Cameron, don't you worry. She's like, Jim just tells me that no one stays dead in sci-fi. Right. But that kind of scares me. I mean, I agree you still need a human presence in this movie and you need the tension in some sort of way between the two forces. But on the other hand, bringing back the two main characters who died in this movie makes the universe feel very small. And I think those are both really strong performances, but neither are like incredible characters where it's like, this you got to bring but, back but, Obi-Wan. You know, like that sequel goes. talk. We're going to see what they do. I right? know. But I do, I just feel like it's, the human shit is almost underrated in this movie. You need it as the bounce. And so, but, I, but if for we have five a, Avatar movies, I want them to broaden the scope. I, know, I want them but, just going no, different but, no, directions. No, but you saw Taruk. You saw it. And when it's like the Amidikaya clan and the other clan are arguing about how to make a dinosaur skeleton, you're like, oh, I, I'm this is in too deep. This is like fan fiction. But I say this in the Taruk episode, and I'll say it again now. What's the difference between Taruk and the Avatar sequel? Just to explain to you guys, Taruk is this fucking Cirque du Soleil show that we saw months ago and recorded an episode months ago, and we're finally going to release it next week. And so you're going to listen to that episode that. that was recorded before we had recorded any of the James Cameron episodes. Or before the election. Yeah, any of it. Yeah, before yeah. the election happened, right. and we had to predict what happened on yeah, it. Jesus Christ. Um, I The difference is that James Cameron didn't direct Taruk. No, I know. I, he I know. To execute this I know. Shit. I'm just saying, like, it just, just gave me Tell a me stories in the Avatar universe. I don't know. I mean, at this point, the full war, Suse dies, Awa hears him, and then he gets into. Just the, the scenes, the action's so crisp. It's great. It's so understandable, like, what's going on. I think the creature design's really good, man. Creature design's All the great, monsters are cool. But, like, all the stuff of Jake, like, Jump, flying, jumping off, throwing a grenade, jumping back yeah, on, like, good. you know, you blowing up the ship, you see what the ship does. Like, yeah, that shit's good. Sute, when Suse gets in the death scene, fight, the, like, ex- yeah. the physics of him swinging, yeah. uh, like on the Taruk, is so cool. Yeah, it's so well done. That Suse's death, I like a lot because it's like uh, we we've gotten very few scenes, sorry, of humans next to Navi, mm-hmm. and it's one of the few times where you see the scale, and it's like. Oh, he just looks so clunky. I mean, it's like watching like Manu Bowl play basketball, where it's yeah, like totally. his limbs are too long. Like weird, he doesn't yeah. know how to do but shit. But it is, they, and they do a good job integrating the two of them. Together. Really you good know, job. Him and, the, him and the humans together. He gets into uh, a robot knife fight with Korra. I would say, by the way, the, the extended edition adds that scene with Sute where you see him later. Not a good scene. Really bad scene. Really bad and scene. really bad in the flow of the movie as well. Like really interrupts the flow of the movie. Yeah, because so. it happens right before. There's Ugh. a scene in the extended edition where Sute is dying and he and, tells Jake, that he has to take over the clan. Jake's like, I don't know. And he's like, also, please kill me. Yeah, and you're just like, you know, we got all of that. Yeah. We we got that Jake's going to sucks. passing the torch, you know, thing. Ugh. It sucks. But yeah. The battle's just so good. I know it's like the best part of the movie and we're almost skimming over it, <laughs> but, but go watch describe it. describe That's all point. Go it's a visceral experience. It. It There's really no way is. for us to talk about it. And it's even hard to watch in 2D, you know? So God forbid the two of us try to talk about it here in our the 2D 1D friends. podcast. Right. We're the 2D friends. Where the the yeah, two the first fans. dimension is audio. The second dimension is friendship. So they have a knife fight in the robot suit, and uh, I like that um, Natiri is the one who kills Korich. That she's she's the one who saves the day. You know that most of the fight happens between Jake and then he rips open the pod, so Jake is like fucking out of it, and he's mm-hmm. like suffocating, and then Natiri. With the arrows, shoots three cool arrows into his chest, and a teary. It's great, sa- kills great the death scene. Cool that she gets to do it too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I like that. Yeah. Uh, and Avatar, he, and then uh, you know they then they plug him, and we should say Grace dies, Grace and dies. they try to plug her into Awa, and she says I'm with her, but then she dies. But I think she's she's in that tree. They bro. also make her some some plant underwear. <laughs> they do. She's naked, but they put plants over her naughty parts. I would say. This is maybe those scenes where uh, they try and plug them into yeah. Awa Tree and all the avatars are around. I mean, sorry, all yeah. the Navi are around sweet, like, nah, 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 and yeah. there's like glowing, pulsing ground. Feels like, a little too rookie. Well, I just think, yeah, that's like probably where <laughs> some people are like, yo, fuck this shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like, this is stupid. Well, I forgot my favorite line or line reading in the movie is the scene where uh, uh, Suse realizes that Natiri slept with Jake Sully. And he puts her on blast in front of her parents. And then it just cuts to Sigourney's avatar. And she just goes, oh, shit. <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. You had hair sex with the princess. I think it's great. You I think really it, she's did. really funny. It is really, you're right. It's really funny. Yeah, so she's got, she's got her plant brush. She dies. They try to connect it to the tree. 
They, Natiri shoots Quaritch, and then and they're the, trying to connect her to her avatar. Right. They're trying to like download her brain into they're her like, avatar. I think work. the implication is that she's in the tree, but not in the avatar. I think it's how she's so going to come back. They in the can next get her out. Of that I think tree. she's going to be in the tree. You can get her out of that tree. I'm hoping she plays the tree in the next movie. That's my hope. Is that they don't put her back in the body? That sounds like some Pocahontas shit. I That's don't what like I that. like, Grandmother Willow Tree, baby. Ooh, boy. But just she'll around have a face, the riverbed, right? Like, yeah, like Grandmother Willow Tree. Will come out of the tree. One of the oh, worst. Cool. Just one of the worst the Disney films ever. Riverbend. I like Pocahontas a lot. I think the first thirty minutes of Pocahontas are immaculate. I think it's a gorgeous looking movie for sure, and I do think the beginning is pretty strong. I think the first thirty minutes are narratively that's really a, strong. A fairly objectionable film. I think the first thirty minutes <laughs> rule and the songs are good throughout. Oh no, I hate the songs. I think the songs are good. No, that's that was when the song started to get bad. Will I marry Coco Wong? <laughs> yeah, there you I go. Savages. My own path. <laughs> Let's not talk about savages. <laughs> All right, so uh, Avatar, and then mine yeah, at the mine. end. Uh uh-uh. uh At the end, no, no, <laughs> we're getting we're we're doing well. But at the end, they they put him in the Jake Bobby, the Jake Virginia Avatar, company. right? Yeah. Right? Right. They, they, Eyes open. They, Avatar. they get the humans out of there, and then Rabisa gives like a little shitty thing, like, oh, it's like you know, you win some, you lose some. And then they hook him up, and he's Avatar. Now, when I walked out of the film, I went, that's a nice, perfect, closed off story. That's the tale. He becomes the Avatar. He finds a new lease on life. They shouldn't make sequels. Watching it now, seven years later, with all the sort of, uh, you know, unfulfilled promises of the Avatar sequels, I'm actually like, you know what? I'm done with this movie. I just want to see the other ones. Like I'm like I now like knowing where he's that he's got such big plans for it. Mm-hmm. Now I look at this movie as like table setting in a way. You know, I want to see him just fucking live in this universe. Totally. Now that we know all the rules, I'm I'm into that too. I yeah. mean, as long as the movie's good. Yeah, I just I don't saw want to work the first flight to bring back all the human so... characters. I wanted to go in weird directions. I wanted to tell we'll tales. See. Who knows? I want a new planet. I want a new avatar. Well, yeah. he's p- talked about that too. That I would you'll love visit some of the other planets in the in the Prometheus system or whatever. I would love that so much. Um, so uh, that's the motion picture Avatar uh, merchandise spotlight. Oh, yes. So this movie had uh, some of the worst selling merchandise for a blockbuster film in history. Yeah, because like you say, nobody, no interested. one cares about the characters, so they didn't do it. I, even the creatures and the vehicles didn't sell well, but it did produce what, in my opinion, is one of the funniest action figures ever made. Which is uh, the Parker Selford action figure. Let me see. So you talk about a film where, I mean, even no one even wants to buy like a fucking Grace Augustine, right? That's not sticking in the craw. And the Avatars even, the Navis didn't even do well. Parker Selfridge is just Giovanni Ribisi, dressed up business casual, coming with a golf club. Love it. Because his first scene in the movie, he plays this golf into a mug. Like it looks at nothing all. like him. Oh There's my god! No appeal in that thing existing. Ugh. Even if you're like me and you love Giovanni Ribisi and Avatar, it's just a dude in slacks, a shirt, and a striped tie, real, and real. he's got a golf putter. All right, that's all it is. It's a great action figure, and by great, I mean terrible. Okay, the film won three Oscars. Wait, wait. Also, no, slots. Man, come on. Oh, and now they're making slot machines. They're expanding the brand with sure. Taruk and slot machines. Are the two big? That's how you know a movie's a hit when you make a slot machine. Okay. okay. That's right. a merchandise spotlight. It all sold really badly. You can probably buy it on eBay for like two cents. Film won three Oscars. Spotlight, click, turned off. Great. Can you name the three Oscars it won? <laughs> yes. It won uh, production design. Yes. Ro- Robert Stromberg, is that his name? Uh, and Rick Carter. Yeah. Right. Who won. Who, uh, Art direction, they call it. You know. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then he also directed Maleficent, which is a bad movie. Maybe Stromberg should... did, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, pr- uh, art directors don't direct well. Often no. I mean, think, you're thinking of Bo Welch. Yeah, who yeah. was a great art director and made hey, the cat. Sometimes I don't know. Like, carry yeah. on, but yes, Catherine Hardwick was an art director too. I think. Anyway, I she think she turned cool. out well. Is she? I can't remember. If I she's... believe she started as an art director. Anyway, uh, it also won a best cinematography, which is odd. Mauro Fiore. Well, that was I think the general Oscar voting pool being like, what a good looking movie. Yeah, but indeed, it's not the cinematography that's good. It's the animation and the visual effects and the, you know, the work they put into lighting. I mean, yeah. there's some, I don't know. Especially watching it in 2D at home, the fully live action scenes look a little flat to me. Sometimes. But they look flat because you can tell they're composed to pop in 3D and they're very brightly no, and plainly I mean, lit because the images need to come through. Right. And... I mean, I just saw Billy Lynn's Halftime Walk and yeah. it, it's got that problem. Yeah. 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 Right. I saw it in 2D. Um, but this was the beginning of, this was the first digital film to win Best Cinematography. Mm-hmm. And then after this, four out of the five next Best Cinematography winners are 3D movies. Yeah. They're mostly CGI. Most of those winners are really bad winners. It becomes Hugo, Life of Pi, and Gravity. 
and didn't, yeah, yeah, like, right, yeah. Right, four out of the five are those. So it's a very weird precedent that's now set where they're digital 3D movies that are mostly computer generated. It's because stupid Oscar voters they're just like, oh, think it looks best good. cinematography means, yeah, what's the movie that looked good? Right, because there's no 3D award. I anyway, mean, the only dumb. good cinematography nom- uh, win that they've given out recently was Inception in 2010, which is actually kind of a surprising win. Yeah. But, I mean, those two Chivo wins, yeah. I don't know. I love Chivo. That's I mean Chivo's good. I don't know. I don't know if Birdman. Whatever. It doesn't matter. My boy Wally Fester, though. Rapping that hard. Love Wally. So, box office, though. Yeah. First, we'll play the game. Well, actually, no. First, let me just give you... Yeah. Just It's just to recount. You know, it's, It was incredible Opens narrative. to 77. Yeah. Next weekend, 75. 1.8 yeah. drop. Okay. Next weekend, 68. 50, 42, 54... And then it's that's Martin Luther King weekend, 54. Yes, that's right. So there's a bump for a four day weekend. Yeah. And then it starts to go down, you know, 34, 31, 22, 23. Okay, but but then back 30, 31 is week what? 31 is week seven. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, it is pretty insane. That is insane. I mean, at that point, the movie had made. And also, we should note these are weekends I'm giving you. The other thing was every day the movie was making like tons of money. And huge weekday numbers. Not only just the first couple of weeks during the holidays, but even after that. It was making like $20 million a day yeah. on a weekday. My brother and my dad. It, it made like, by week seven, it's made $600 million, which is pretty much number one. My brother and my dad, when um, uh, like the uh, Barry Bonds, not Barry Bonds, the Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire thing was going on. And it was like. Oh, home run record. It's coming. And every day in the newspaper, there'd be like, another one, another one. They're getting closer. They're getting closer. Who's going to win, right? I remember that, like, excitement over that was like, oh, man, I wish there was a thing like this that I gave a shit about. Right. My, the way my father and I, we were so invested in tracking this movie on a week-to-week <laughs> basis, being like, it's going to do it. Right, right. Because it had been, like, 12 years since Titanic, and it was like, is it going to is it going to crap out? Like, it, all it needs is one big drop-off weekend, and it won't catch Titanic. Mm-hmm. But it never had the big drop. Yeah, right. The drops were always so small always that it, small it had drops. the legs to do it. And it beat Titanic by like $150 million domestic. Um, okay, so the second weekend was the weekend where it really proved its staying power. And that was the biggest weekend in box office history. There's never been a higher grossing weekend. That's Christmas weekend and Sherlock Holmes and Alvin the Chipmunks, the squeak will open. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah. I remember that. I'm trying to reverse engineer from there what opens. We're talking December. I know, December, the first weekend. Okay, December 18th, okay. 2009, Avatar opens to... Seventy-seven million dollars in thirty-four hundred screens. Now, a good opening for an original film, but at the time they were like, they were like, well, yeah. Again, it was sort of the thing of well, not going to make back its budget. It's yeah. Titanic style, then sure, it's going to do great. But, but what are the chances of something holding Titanic style? Some number number two was a Disney animated film, uh, Princess and the Frog. Yes, cool. Uh, which is okay. I think it's fine. It's fine. I don't really care about it. Uh, me neither. Twelve million in its fourth week. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. And up at 100. Uh, that's right. Still ends up killing traditional animation forever. Pretty much. Number three is a film that I despised that was one of the biggest box office sensations of the year. I got two Oscar nominations. And one one. one yes. Yeah. I believe it's my least favorite film of 2009. It's called The Blind Side. Really terrible movie. Yep. Although effective. I can't deny when you watch it, you know, it's effective in the same way that like, a human interest story on the news is kind of effective. Sure. You're rooting for people. Sandra Bullock, I think, is incredible in the film. Oh, see, I think she's bad in it. Yeah, well, you're dead. I think that's a bad performance. No, that the whole movie only works because of her. I think the movie doesn't work, and she's not good at it. That's crazy. That movie is, do you want to give me the runtime? The runtime on that film? (laughs) It's just long. Yeah, what, that movie's two and a half? No, it's not two and a half. It's like 250. That movie did 250 domestic, right? Uh, the movie eventually makes $255 million domestic. That is insane for that movie. On like a $28 million budget. Yeah. Huge. Like, it's all because like, of The Sandy. Rookie made $43 million and people were like, that's a huge hit. Great movie. A little inspirational sports movie. Okay. Number four is a piece of shit comedy starring two kind of washed up comedy actors. Not even comedy actors. Just, I don't know. Just shit people. It's a piece of shit comedy this starring two pieces of sucks. shit. We don't need to talk about this. The title is a question. <laughs> the title is a question. So it's not what's it the worst that can happen. It opened $6 million. It made 29 on a $60 million budget. Who is this? This isn't its opening weekend, is it? This is its opening weekend. This is its opening weekend. I have no idea why they were opening it. I guess it was counter-programming to Avatar because it's like a rom-com, kind of. It's a rom But it also it was one of those movies that came out right after the recession that was about how evil rich people were. 
I know exactly what film this is. I sure. saw it in theaters. It's called Did You Hear About the Morgan? Why did you see that in theaters? Because Romley wants to see it. Romley sure. loved Hugh, Hugh Grant. Grant. That was her favorite uh, actor. Sarah but even for Hugh Grant, that's a it's a real low, that, that one. That movie is tough. Ugh. God. Wilford Brimley, Mary Steenburgen, I mean, it's got a stack supporting cast, and it's it's one of the hardest watches I've had to sit through. You know, I recently watched The China Syndrome on TCM, which I'd yeah. never seen before, which is Wilford Brimley's first performance, which is pretty funny because he's like a bald, fat old man in it, but he's great. Well, he's great like in 42 it. in Cocoon. I know. Well, he's one of those guys who just always looked old. Yeah. All right. Number five is uh, the second in an incredibly popular franchise of films that has already been forgotten. The second in an incredibly popular? How many were there in total? Five. There were five in total. This one has made in its fifth week. It makes four million and uh, two hundred seventy-five total so far. It eventually grosses two hundred ninety-six. A uh, Twilight New Moon. Yes. Okay. The worst of the Twilight sagas. Uh, Easily, I think Eclipse is the worst. No, Eclipse is the best. Actually, Eclipse I find very boring. No, Eclipse is fun. It's like a dumb action movie. Well, that's why I think Breaking Dawn Part Two is kind of Breaking good. Dawn also fun, but New Moon is the one that's the most ponderous. It's just like, do I like Jacob or Edward? Nothing happens. Nothing happens in the film. I would go Breaking Dawn Part Two, then Twilight, then Twilight One is not a good movie. No, but it's at least fun. It's swinging for the fences. <sighs> the first Twilight's crazy. I don't think any of them are good. No, they're all bad. I think Twilight 1, though, at least is like, it's got some, some pep in its step. Some other movies, Invictus. You think it's already been forgotten? A little bit. Okay. I mean, I think its actors are sticking around, and that's yeah. fine, but... Uh, Case do best in the biz. I don't, I don't know that that movie has, has really lingered in the cultural consciousness. I think the idea of the movie yeah. has a little bit, but I don't think people are out here. Like, people out here still being like, this is my favorite Harry Potter movie. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yours. I like, think you know, Hunger Games came back in so again. quickly. Hunger Games, like, was really, like, before Twilight was even done already, like, taking the bloom off the rose. Absolutely. Uh, running laps around it. Mm-hmm. And then also, uh, there's been, like, a second wave Harry Potter thing now. Yeah. There were even, like, the second well, wave. Harry Potter is, like, still popular. It's just in around. general. And people are like, wait, is Harry Potter still the best? Well, kids read it. Like, Twilight. Yeah. Uh, it's popping able... again. It's taking over new generations. Okay. Some other movies, yeah, Invictus. Which sucks. A bad movie. Quite a bad movie. Clint Eastwood biopic. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Nelson Mandela. Uh, Christmas Carol. The Jim Carrey Christmas Carol. Never saw it. Yeah, it's, I mean, I don't like those. Zemeckis I don't movies. either. I'm but supposed to talk to him soon. I want to do Zemeckis. Ask him? ask him if we should cover him on the podcast. <laughs> ask him if he'd be a guest. You should ask him if he'd be a guest. Sure. Bobby Z. Uh, Bobby Z. Up in the Air, which was, of course, one of the big hits of the year. Yeah, and it's definitely a movie. Yeah, it's fine. That's fine. It's kind of well acted. Clooney's good. In it. Really good actor. Good Clooney. Uh, good Clooney. I, I think for me, goes great. I would have given her the Amiga's Oscar that great. year. I, no, I would have given Kendrick the Oscar that year. So good in that movie. Who wins in 09? It's uh, Monique, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I would have given, yeah. But Kendrick's, I think, I just like Kendrick, too. I would have given it to Formiga. Um, Brothers. Oh, yeah, that movie is fine. That's the uh, the Jim Sheridan remake. Remake, yeah. yeah. With Natalie Portman, yeah. Yeah, Toby's good. Man. Old Dogs. Hey! Your favorite. Your favorite sticking around there. Yeah. Uh, it's a great movie. What was the final domestic on Old Dogs? 57? 49. Really? <laughs> Not so good. No. Even worse than <laughs> I thought. Although beat its budget. 35 budget. Yeah, they also sat in a shelf for two years. Yeah, uh, yeah, 2012. Kind of a weird, weird year because like a lot of good movies, not a lot of good hit movies. No. Although there is Star Trek, which is great. District Nine was a hit. Up, I don't like District Nine. I don't love Up. Although Up's okay. I think I like both those movies. Up is lesser Pixar for me. District Nine I don't love, but I think is solid. District Nine's just one of those things where I'm into it for 45 minutes, and then when the action kicks off, I'm out. Like yeah. you know, which is where I, you know, Avatar's the opposite. Uh, Transformers: The Revenge of the Fallen is a nightmare. Yeah, that was that year too. Right, that's that was the number one film of the year until Avatar came in at the last second, swooped it up. So sequel ideas. Let's wrap this up. But uh, you know, we talked about the sequels. Ben, you got any sequel ideas for Avatar? I mean, this is it. Like we're now looking ahead. Yeah. Cameron keeps getting a blank check. He got another one from this. Well, this is what I. I and this his is, blank check this time was four blank checks or five or ever many fucking sequels he's gonna make. This is my final thought. That I want to throw out there. Okay. And this might be controversial, and I've already incurred your wrath too many times in this episode. So much wrath. Watching this movie last night, a thought that kept on coming to me was, I wish this movie had flopped. Go on. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I mean, I don't agree yet, but... Well, because the film's the film regardless. We have it either way. I like this movie, right? But I would be more interested to see what 
would have happened to James Cameron if this movie had, if not even completely flopped, but disappointed Mm -hmm. where his next steps would be. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting virtual fiction or whatever. I don't know. I think this film plays to his strengths, but it's also kind of safe. I think uh, he said a lot like, you know, I um, every story I have left that I want to tell as a filmmaker, I can tell in the Avatar universe, which I like Avatar. I'm interested in where he goes with it. I'm not that invested in the Avatar universe, certainly not in the characters. I'd love to see him generating new, different stuff. Mm-hmm. And I also think anytime he's had a little bit of a setback, he usually comes back with strong work. You're, there's only, what do you mean? There's only Abyss T2. Uh, and, and, you know, True Lies, which was not as well received as the previous ones, leads All into right. Titanic. But And uh, Piranhas turns into that ter- First Terminator. That doesn't count. That does not count. You I'd like bastard. to see him on the back of his heels a little bit. Um, and I, uh, I, I, you know. That's an interesting argument. My worry, I guess, would partly be that he'd be like, all right, fine. I'm just going to dive under the water for the rest of my life. That's you know, the fear. Like, you know, he'd be like, you know what? Take your shitty movies. But there was what even I like about like, him is yeah. he's like, no, let's push this tech. He's giving interviews where he's like, I want 3D where you can't even put on, we don't even need to put on glasses. Like, he wants to mess around. I don't know. Let him mess around with Avatar. There was the talk of him doing the Cleopatra movie with Angelina Jolie, which is like, no. I want to see that. Absolutely I not. See him don't do make weird Cleopatra shit. movies. That's not weird shit. That's boring shit. I like no. that. That sounds Avatar like such two a is more interesting to, than Cleopatra. I would rather see Cleopatra just because I want to see him do different stuff. I think he would. That would be terrible. Ugh. I'm sure it'd be terrible. I want to see it though. No, that would be so bad. Thank God that never happened. She's too old for that now, right? She doesn't want to do that anymore. I don't know. Here's the thing we have to do. You forgot the final segment we have to do. Burger report. We have to rank the Camerons. It's tough. Oh, it's tough. Oh, I'm agonizing already. Cameron ranking. Here we go. Number 10, Ghosts of the Abyss. Number 9, Piranha 2 The Spawning. Number 8, Aliens of the Deep. Number 7, True Lies. Mm -hmm. Number 6 is Avatar. Right, and that's, you you think, but no, that's okay. Go ahead. I thought you'd get angry about that. Number 5 is The Abyss. Sure. Number 4 is Titanic. Uh Uh-huh. Number three is The Terminator. Number two is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Number one is Aliens. Okay. That's my Cameron 10. Right. Whereas for me, it'd be 10 Piranha, nine Aliens of the Deep, eight Ghost of the Abyss, seven True Lies, six um, The Abyss, five Avatar, four Talk and Talk, four The Terminator, Okay. three... Uh, Terminator 2. Wow. Two aliens, one Titanic. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Interesting yeah. list. Interesting list. And that's Cameron. James Cameron. And we, aliens might be number one. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough at the time. Aliens is my number one. Well, a good filmmaker. We've had a good time with him. Yeah. Uh, we've had a great time with him. He's been tough, though. He's been tough. A lot to of good about. movies. A lot of good movies. Like, that's the problem with yeah. the good movie guys. Well, let's announce our next main series. I think we got to do it right now. Next week, we're going to have a Ben's Choice. Yeah, baby. Well, no, Taruk. Oh, yeah. next right. week, I'm Taruk. Sorry. Next week, bonus episode, Taruk the First Flight, recorded before any of our Cameron episodes. Then after that, Ben's Choice, we're doing it, long promised, Man Who Knew Too Little. Bill Murray's The Man Who Knew Too Little. It's crazy. Ah, oh, I'm so excited. Ugh. And then for, we're excited to exclusively announce our next miniseries. Perhaps the biggest blank check. We thought over it. Maybe this is the biggest blank check anyone's ever gotten in history. I think so. A filmmaker who already was decades into a career of just some of the biggest hits in history. Uh, A lot of Oscar nominations, but never a win. He finally wins Best Picture. And after that, takes a four-year break, at which point he founds his own studio. Pretty cool. Not production company. An entire studio. That's what they call a baller move. And he, in this baller move, loved it. You're getting really griffy now. (laughs) <laughs> that is scary yeah uh he uh founded an entire studio to bankroll his movies as if he didn't already have enough powers if he wasn't already an oscar winner he didn't have a big enough dick as it was he put a bicycle pump in that dick made it even bigger of course we're talking about our first ever conditional miniseries in which we're only covering a section of someone's career but it's yeah. a long section so it's still long still a long section spielberg the dreamworks years Steven Spielberg. Are we just going to call it that? Maybe. it's Because it, otherwise it gets hard with the puns making it clear that it's only about that but one But also, period. his movies do not lend themselves to puns. Not at all. His we'll, titles. We'll talk over the title. But it's it will be uh, Spielberg starting in 1997 with 
the With double his header, most beloved film. The Lost World Jurassic Park in Amistad. <laughs> And it will be going to 2016's The BFG. So it's 19 years of Spielberg, 17 films, I believe. 17 Oh, my films. God. It's 16 It's going to be our longest miniseries. It's a bit of a risk. It's a bit of a risk. But, but there's a lot of variety. We got a lot of ups and downs. We're going to have a lot of good guests, and we're going to be banking up episodes months in advance because I have to get ahead of filming on the tech. That's partly why we're doing it, guys. Okay. So get ready for Spielberg, the DreamWorks series, or whatever the fuck we call it. But before that, get ready for The Man Who Needs Too Little. But before that, get ready for <laughs> Turok, The First Flight. Padding it out. And before that, I got to do laundry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I gotta, think I'm getting close to it, too. I got to do a laundry load today. I got to wash right. my Watto costume. Oh, I'm going to mention that quickly. I'm just going to plug that very quickly. Okay. Uh, I, I'm now... Uh, emoji. I, the uh, George Lucas talk show, which we talked about a lot in the past, the great Connor Ratliff. Uh, had him on the show. Yes. Uh, host a talk show as a George Lucas live at the UCB East Theater the first Friday of every month at midnight. Mm -hmm. And I am, uh, for the foreseeable future, going to be his sidekick, his, his Andy Richter, his Ed McMahon, as Watto, who longtime listeners of the podcast will know, is uh, my worst bit that I commit to the hardest. It's a great bit. My most offensive bit. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I am uh, playing Watto first Friday of every month uh, if you want to see it at any point in time. You, this, this is an open-ended plug. Just come check him out, guys. All come right. check it out. i got to wash Great my Watto suit. Great way to end the Cameron miniseries. Got to wash my Watto But we suit. do have the bonus episode next week, so yeah, that's fun. All right. Okay. All right. All hey, right. Uh, thanks for listening. Later. Please rate, review, subscribe, all yep. that nonsense. And as always, dun 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 you know when they do that part? When there's sort of like the woman moaning? And she's like, oh, hi, 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 hello. All right, I'm hungry. Da -na -na. Bye. This has been a UCB Comedy production. Check out our other shows on the UCB Comedy Podcast Network. 